Hello, welcome to hey. Wednesday. It welcome is Rabbit Stew. Oh, stew, Rabbit Stew. Yeah, let's yeah. start with that. It's it's also book. Wednesday. <laughs> so welcome to welcome to both of those things, Rabbit Stew and Wednesday. Rabbit Stew and Wednesday, and Comic Book and Day. Comic Book Day. You notice Zach isn't here today. No. Uh, how no. You, you you fought your way back? Yeah, literally. I I just punched him in the middle. Uh, he was like, I guess I'm going to do comic books. And I punched him. I was like, no. That's why he was just lying on the ground outside. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why okay. he's been there for like 10 minutes. Um, but it's also May the 4th. It is. May the 4th be with all of you. All of you. May the 4th be with all of you. It is, it is the day. It's Star Wars Day. It is Star Wars Day. And it's also Comic Book Day. It is also Comic Book Day. I do want to say thank you for letting me try out Comic Book Day again. I mean, you read Today you read like more comics than I did. You no, have this I, huge stack of stuff I you read. I absorbed comic books. Uh, like this, like five comics. I'm actually really excited because this sampling, thank you for resubsetting, Ooh, no. the sampling that I was able to read, I was very happy with. And it was a really diverse stack. So I got Good. like different genres and I'm excited to talk about them. But first, let's talk about let's talk everything. about everything we got going on because we got news. We got to yeah. do our rabbit stew thing. We'll get to our comic book day song. Yeah, it'll come. It will happen. But first, we got to do the news, and we'll talk about our show, and we'll talk about you guys because you're great human beings, humans actually. Yeah. All right. So just to remind you guys, uh, I'm Claudia, and this is Scott. Hello. Uh, and we're on Rabbit Stew. Please follow us on Facebook or on the Twitters or on Twitch, which is probably what you're doing right yes. now. Yes, definitely at least on Twitch. Yeah. That one's real easy. You just click the thing. It's right there. Yeah, the little heart for those who don't understand. Yeah. And remember, every five subscribers we get, we give away a Steam key. Uh, so subscribe. Tell your friends. If you're lucky, it might be a dating sim. But only if you're lucky. If you're lucky. If you're lucky, it's a dating sim. <laughs> if Claudia's lucky, it's a dating sim. Yeah, if Claudia's lucky, <laughs> it's a dating sim. I'm taking off this jacket. So it's May the 4th. Now that I meant to yeah. wear my Star Wars shirt. Yeah, And come you came on. prepared. I did. I don't know how not to wear anything DC Comics. Like, yeah. I've got, like, I've got like Superman, Batman, The Flash, two Wonder Woman. Actually, I have, like, six Batman shirts. Well, and, like, one of each. And then, like, some Wonder Woman stuff. And that's basically my closet. Yeah. Then I've got, like, a couple Star Wars things and, like, one Thor t-shirt. Yeah. It. Well, that just means you have a lot of primary colors in your... I and do. black. Man, in high school, growing up, I was just always black band t-shirts, and then I discovered comics, and it's just like blue, red, or green. Those are the three colors I'll get on any given day. Because like 80% no. of cut superheroes are blue or red. Yeah, no, blue and red are... It's because it pops. Yeah. It just pops. As a side note, when I was in high school, I also wore all black, and my parents were like, are you a goth? And I was like, no, I just... Black is my favorite color. Because, you know, you all went to that stage where you wore shorts that didn't, shirts that didn't fit, mm -hmm. which is like way too big. And you can pull that off better when it's black. Yeah, yeah. Not to mention, like, when you're, like, 16 and trying to avoid everybody. Like, my thing was just, like, I'd be wearing, like, a slight shade of a color, and I'd feel like I'm a beacon. Yeah. I'm like, everybody look at my shirt. Everybody. Uh, I just, black shirts. I just, hot topic, before it was cool, I was like, yeah, give me everything black. You just never have to give a fuck. No, you don't. You just be like, this is the shirt I'm wearing today. And whatever it is, it'll go with all the other stuff yeah. you have. Unless you have a white a haired cat, and then you just don't. So today is fashion day on uh, yeah. Rabbit Stew, apparently. Apparently, that's what happens when I'm in the Zack seat. But yeah, it's Star Wars Day. We had we had Star Wars trivia this week, so it's kind of Star Wars Week yeah, here I mean, at Hyper RPG. Let's be honest, it's Star Wars Week every week. That's true. Like ever since they made that new movie. Yeah, I mean, it's like the most mainstream geek thing, besides like I don't even know, like Call of Duty What's or like more mainstream geek. Harry Potter. Uh. uh I would say there's more Star Wars fans than. Yeah, but there's still like there's still Harry people Potter out fans. there who, if you like Star Wars, they'll be like, that Star Wars thing. Yeah. Or like my sister wasn't excited at all about seeing Star Wars Seven. She was like, I'll see the movie, and I was like, we have to go on opening night twice. <laughs> uh, twice. Twice. It was worth it. Uh, but she's you know she's gonna go see Fantastic Beasts. She read all the Harry Potter. Like it's oh, yeah. it's not even geeky. People don't realize that it's totally fantasy. Yeah, like a normal conversation is, what house are you in? Huh? Yeah. Like that is a normal. It's like a sorority thing. thing. Yeah. There yeah. ain't no sororities going like, are you a Sith or are you a Jedi? No, it's, it's, That's not happening at Pi Kappa whatever. <laughs> Pi Kappa Psi Psi. Sorry, we don't have Slytherins in here. Mm -mm. <laughs> Which I know a lot of Slytherins. They're not terrible person. They're not terrible. I know a lot of sor I don't know a lot of sorority people, but they my, think they'd oh, be Slytherins. My sister is actually in a sorority. My sister she, was, but then she got kicked out. Oh, that's a story. It is a story, but it's not mine, and uh, it's not today's. Uh, <laughs> but it was because she was smarter than the rest of them. 
Uh, I'll just oh. leave it at that. And let's let's talk about Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, let's talk about, well, let's not just talk about Star Wars. Uh, actually, so we wanted to show, Steph did some art. And this is our way of saying, happy May the 4th. Happy Star Wars Day. Um, is that, oh gosh, can I zoom? Yeah. So this is a pic that Steph did. And it's Kirby with the broken, hu uh, not Hulu remote, wow, um, Vive remote. And then... Overlord oh, in the background, you have failed me for the last time. So I'm really excited to show off. Steph I think we got to get him one of those cloaks. Oh, dude, I bet he has eight of them already. Like, I think I don't know if I'm gonna sleep through the night until I see a live action recreation of this picture. Now that would be I great. Think that's my new, it's my new life's gonna Your keep me dream. up at night until somebody. I've got to get, I got to get Kirby the robes. I got to get a cloak for Zach. No, it's if you're the hundred, if you're thousands. If you're the 1K subscriber, you can have any wish come true. That's how it works. Is that how it works? That's how it works. Okay. If I'm the one, that's why. So whoever it is can make that this happen. This has to be your wish. Yeah. So like again, this is me just making up stuff. But if the one, if I was the 1K subscriber, I'm gonna ride a tandem bike with Zach. Like that's a thing that is happening. But you know, if if you get the 1K, maybe then, then they're putting on these costumes. Yeah. Yeah. I like how the 1K is just a wish. It's like a mystical thing. The um, magical one, the power of the 1K. No, uh, Human Havex, Kirby is wearing an obnoxious wrestling belt. You just can't see because his sleeve's in the way. Yeah, what makes you, like, what makes you think he's not wearing one? You have no yeah, reason to believe no. he's not wearing an obnoxious wrestling belt under his arm there. There's no, no evidence to suggest on him. Marco! Arislin, what do you want to say? Giyaka said I should tip for future Claudia, but I only see present Claudia. Or is it a trick and it's really future Claudia come back and replaced present Claudia? Hashtag Shiawas happiness is not being confused. Are you from the future and you forgot to tell me? Wow. If I was from the future, I'd be way better at this job, guys. Come on. Come on. We'd know where we were going and stuff. Yeah. We, we, I'd actually know how to control a show and not talk about fashion all the time. So that begs the question, does that mean future Claudia's out there? Uh, I'm assuming future Claudia's out there and she has like one mechanical eye. She's it's from the darkest timeline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, go! Thank you. Dominic is not 69. What do you want to say? Edge for Fang. Street Sam's stick together. Hashtag Fang, hashtag Aries. I'm really excited, guys, because if you don't watch, um, I'm on a show on Wednesday, which is the Shadow Run show. It's Corporate, Corporate Sins. Sins. It's at 6 p.m. And what I'm that's tonight. Yeah, it's tonight because it's Wednesday. And what I'm super excited about is that last episode was the investigation episode where we had to figure everything out and go to our contacts. Which, let's be honest. Fang is not really good at investigating. Not his forte? No, it's not her forte. Um, so I'm really excited because now with that edge, it's like the other time. The time where we make a plan and then it's ruined and then we just have to run and gun. Like that is... <laughs> I like how you just, you know, this is how you know somebody's been playing RPGs for a while. Like we've got this plan. So I'm excited for about three minutes in when it all goes to Does shit. And we got to do something else instead. Exactly. Oh my gosh. It's gonna be a good episode tonight. It's gonna be a good episode, and I'm just really worried about mainframe. So we'll talk about that episode, and I will give you all the things. All the things about this episode. I'll give you, like, uh, things. what's actually happening, because we're doing a run for Evo. All right, so remember, after this is watching paint dry, and who, what is watching paint dry? Can you give us some synopsis? Hi, Rabbit Power, go! Wow, for a what would you like to say? Hi, Scott and Claudia. Hashtag comic art. Hashtag Claudia cult. Hash set or dash crip believes in Claudia. Get another one. Power, go. Send the subscriber. What would you like to say? Okay, Claudia, you convinced me. I won't subscribe until after 165 other people do, so I can be number 1,000. Thanks, so, Claudia. Good point. You know, and to be fair, I've also subscribed. I'm just saying make a secondary subscribe yeah, account. Yeah. That's what it's in. Just like, subscribe as many times as you need. I mean, yeah. you get you get monitor set up. You get a different account. Yeah. You just get like eight one. computers. You hack into the matrix. Trust me, it's worth it. It's worth it. Totally um, worth it. No, it's a good point, though. If you really like this channel, please... 
subscribe before the 1K subscriber. It's a good point. Then you get the wish. Yeah. You and, might. Like, yeah. you don't know, but if everybody, like, does it at once, it's like eBay. The last minute, yeah. you can't just be like, I'm going to be at 1,000. Around, like, 900, everybody's going to be like, I got to get that wish. So, so you got to put it in there because you never know how it's going to happen. Yeah, you never know. So while you got watching paint dry next, yeah. and uh, yeah, tell us about it on the, on this channel, we need to make things. Yeah. But we have also a lot of programming on this channel, so we do it sometimes while you guys are watching. Yeah. And uh, Viking Last is going to be there. She's ridiculous. I, oh, she fun. she is so great. Um, she'll make she'll make a show called Watching Paint Dry Entertaining. She does. Right? That's no, no. She makes. That's what Viking Last does for this channel. And she repairs the mechs from our show DFA. That too. She also has like actual qualifications. Yeah, she's she's a great artist, and she uh, and. If, in case you didn't know, Jordan from Hairbrain Screams, the guy who created these games, is going to the be there. Jordan Weissman? The Jordan Weissman wow. is going to be there at the end. So you should totally watch that. Watch paint dry. And after that? After that, it's corporate news. Corporate news Which, in preparation for corporate sins. Correct, sir. You did your homework. And corporate news is our 30-minute show about the meta game that any subscriber can be a part of. Every single one. Like you. Like you. Like that potential subscriber. You could have been a part of the meta game. And you still can. Yeah. Uh, and don't and it's awesome. I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna go home and actually do the thing that I was supposed to do weeks ago. <laughs> Super good at my job, guys. Thanks, Thanks. We'll be there on time. Yeah. Mostly. No, no, I'm gonna totally join my corp and that way they get that extra point. Then after Anna tells us all about the metagame, it's going to be time for Corpse Sins. Time to play. So if you need a synapsis from last week, here's what's going down. We are doing a run for Evo Corp. And what we're doing, and I say we as in NVEC, mm -hmm. the team, they're going to infiltrate a secret in their uh, scientific, uh, what's it called, uh, research group that is kidnapping wow. elves and putting cybernetics in them. And so we... Thanks for having power go! Dominus! Dominius 69, thank you Dominus? for Dominus? Going with Dominus. You got, probably got it, that sounds good. That's definitely not it. That's definitely it, yeah. Dominus. Oh no! Oh, I thought I broke the mic. So. So, as we said before, you did all the planning last week. Yeah. You go on this run for Evo Corp. All the investigation. All the investigation. So, we just lost our Decker, who is secretly Elf. She got pulled into that. And now it's our job to get her back because we need our Decker. It's a rescue mission. So I'm actually really excited. For self-interest. For self-interest. Like you're not like, because we're worrying about her or anything, it's like, oh, damn, she's our Decker. She's the only one of us who's not expendable, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm actually really excited, and I think Lauren is really excited too as our DM, to have a mission without a Decker and see how screwed we get. Mm, that's a good point. We're going to be so screwed. We can't brick anything, guys. Our infiltration is going to be, how do we get to the door? And there's like two ways we have to get to the door, right? One, punch through it. And then the second one is magic through it. I don't even think magic, that's how it works. You know what you got to do? What? Magic punch. Magic punch. Oh, that's so cool. All right. That's your only, you just listed the options. This yeah, sounds like the only one. That's the other one, yeah. So <laughs> that's happening today. That's today's programming. So go watch it. Be, be on all day. All day. Okay, next, because there's so much to talk about. Yes. We're going to talk about tomorrow. <sighs> about, tomorrow's yeah. really exciting. Tomorrow is really cool. And I saw somebody asked about it. x year. x year was like, what di What time does Science Day start? It starts at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard. 12 hours, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. right here on Hyper RPG. Tomorrow is Science Day with our loop. Yeah, yeah, with our loop, which is the Reddit Yes. For this competition, which is about making a super-powered mm -hmm. um, magnet train go around the world. And yeah. For those of you not up to speed, the Elon Musk, the guy who created Tesla cars, in a very old-fashioned way, issued a challenge to the science world. It's yeah. very like, world-renowned scientist Elon Musk has issued a world to all the other, has issued a challenge to the scientists around the world to create a transport system from the city of Los Angeles to the city of San Francisco. Like, it's very, like, it's cool. Yeah. Like, nobody it's just, you can't just be like, hey, scientists, let's try a thing. But it's happening, and it so is. they're coming to us, and we're going to help them out. Yeah. Well, we're not really going to help them out no. that much. We're just going to put them on, on uh, 12 Twitch, hours. and uh, they're going to they're gonna teach us a lot. We're going to learn a lot of science. I've already heard heard a couple of the experiments. Am I allowed to talk about the experiments? No. Are we allowed to talk about the experiments? 
Are we allowed to talk about the experiments? <gasps> okay, so I know for a fact that there, I was asked to get liquid nitrogen. They didn't give it to me. I don't know why. I just ran in there with purple pants and be like, give why me Why were you the glycerin. liquid nitrogen person? Uh, that's my experiment. You can talk about me all day. Um, right. And then we're going to freeze Joe in liquid nitrogen. There might be cornstarch baths. Uh, there could be other stuff. That's the ones that. I'm going to try to build something. I'm not, Are you I'm not be on qualified for that. Yeah, I'm coming on tomorrow. Oh, yes. I think there's a role playing game that's happening with, with cloning. I'm excited about that one. They asked me to do that. That sounds really fun. Yeah, so, it's going to be a cool day tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm looking into Moon Rules or Saint Escapee, who's like, by the way, it's so loud today. <laughs> like, it's so loud today. Is it? It's because Zach's it's not here. This is the loudest. Yeah. This is the loudest comic book show that has ever been. Ever been. <laughs> it is also that, like, now that I'm in charge, I set the speed, and the speed is on cruise control. <laughs> I think cruise control implies a lot more consistency no. than we are able Woo! to provide. <laughs> you know, like those weird uh, instruments that you can touch and then the theremin. You, yeah, yeah. If we're a theremin, we're like <laughs> the theremin of news. That should uh, be our tagline. That, that, that is our that is our um, grouping. If everybody would understand that. That's again to repeat. The stream starts tomorrow at 9 a.m. Set your alarms. Do it, but Pacific Standard Time. So if you are in another country, completely changed math, and it was so revolutionary. <gasps> Do we have a new emote? What? The amount of hours between here and like the EU, or like here. Yeah, I was and thinking, so. if I had another reference point, yeah. that would be cool. But all I've got is just other places in America, because three is an easy number. Three is an easy number. Three is possibly the easiest number. It is, okay. it is one of the top three easiest numbers, oh. I would say. True that. Well, except for zero. Zero is the easiest number. But it's so funny that actually the number, c complete side uh, tangent, the concept of the number zero, like the numeric digit for it, was such a different thing because they would like Roman numerals just said X for 10, but putting that zero digit completely changed math and it was so revolutionary. <gasps> Do we have a new emote? What? What? So you know about the emotes, right? Only vaguely. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to use these things. Like, oh. whenever I'm on Twitch, I just, like, see a bunch of people doing things, and I'm like, that looks kind of neat. So, if you don't... You see, you see our chat box? Oh, no, yeah. I know that we've got sharks, and we've got... Uh, we've got uh, kaiju. Yeah, Of kaiju. course. And but, now we've got... What is this? Wings? Oh, yeah. They're the DFA logo for Death From Above. Oh, that's the DFA logo. Of course. But there's also a whole bunch of new ones that we did yesterday. Like Kirby has one that's a big K. Claudia has the wand, which I'm not supposed to bring to the studio anymore. <laughs> Um, and then there's like a Nerf gun and bullets and just so, okay, here we go. Here's all of them. There we go. This and is then a... do better is a new one because that's one of our slogans. It's I like just, the face palm. Yeah, Zach's face palm. Good. It's great. There's so many new ones. Good. Uh, oh, that good. Could be, that could be one of about 1,500 different pictures of Zach yeah. doing that. Yeah. He's done, what he I does that a lot. What I enjoy is that every time we get an emote, we get closer to spelling the word fuck with the emotes. <laughs> like the moon rules is figuring out. We haven't gotten an F yet. But the U is the DFA, the C for Claudia Colt, yeah. and then the K for Kirby Crew. So we're so close. We are so close. Okay, those are we all can, the We emotions. can do something. I believe in us. Oh, yeah. The, the Nerf gun is a pretty close F. Like, it's really close. It's just not perfect. Okay. All right. So it is comic book day. It's not just Star Wars day. No, it's, it's so much is happening. And tomorrow... It's science day. It's not only science day, but it's also the day Civil War comes out. <gasps> Which is super exciting. I thought movies came out on Fridays. They did, but they just don't anymore. <laughs> they still say they do. Yeah. It's still supposed to come out on May 6th, but, but I'm seeing it tomorrow at 7 p.m. Oh. That doesn't count as a midnight release anymore, all right? I'm going to have dinner after the movie. It doesn't count as late night. What's really funny for me is that I love midnight releases, but they don't even offer midnight releases anymore. Yeah, like the latest showing at the theater I'm going to go to is at 1040. Which is not midnight. No. Not midnight. I like that because I like to go to bed early. So, like, I was I was going to go to the 1040. It's the only non-3D IMAX at my local theater in Bellingham. Oh, my god! So, I was going to go to that one, but I'm like, I'm just going to fall asleep because I'm just, I get, I get tired too much. Oh, uh, yeah, too so, I'm, seeing, I'm, I'm doing the IMAX 3D. I'm doing it big. Yeah, but some people saw it today. Like, Andy Insomnia is, is bragging, throwing shade. Look at you. Oh, yeah. man. Ah, oh, you're so cool. But I, I hear remember when I had a job that let me go to screenings. That was awesome. What was it? 
I was. Well, I still have the job. I just don't get to go to screenings oh. anymore. Um, uh, on this podcast I'm on through KISW in Seattle, oh. uh, which is cool. But like, I got to go to the screenings nobody else wanted to go to, and now just everybody wants to go. It's the comic book movies. To these movies that they're just like, oh, everybody, oh, everybody else has oh. seen it, and I'm gonna be the guy at the podcast like I, I haven't seen it. But we over here haven't seen it. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be great. But on Monday, right here on Harpy oh, R- Hyper RPG. Friday, Saturday, four or five days away, depending on where you're at. Yeah. We are having Civil War trivia hops. Civil War trivia hops. So it could tie into Comic Book Day and the release of the movie. Yeah. Or the actual Civil War. Yeah, not to mention this Saturday, speaking of Comic Book Day, is Free Comic Book Day. <laughs> Saturday. Which, yeah, Saturday. Free Comic Book Day is not like you go to your comic store and they give away free comics. Well, it is like that, it but it's not like all that. the comics. No. Publishers every year have a Free Comic Book Day book they put out. Marvels is the beginning of Civil War number two. Really? Yes. Wait, the second Civil War? Yes. Hey, we just had the third Secret Wars. Uh, so Civil War Two. I mean, we had it's it's it, it literally is Civil War Two, like World War Two. Yeah. Uh, I just it's funny to yeah. me that like the third one, it's no excuse to be secret anymore. <laughs> like That's true. That's true. There like, were Secret the, Wars. There were Secret Wars Two, and there was another Secret Wars. And basically, at no point, like even the first one was just take these guys and put them over here, and they're gonna fight. And it, like, there's no like we're gonna hide the wars from anybody. There's no secret. No, it's not it's a just secret. Wars over there. So anyway, just like Civil War is is just friends bitching. Um, yes, I mean. Yeah, Civil War Two: The Revenge, and Civil War Three: The Reckoning. So yeah, Free Comic Book Day is this Saturday, so you could get your Civil War. You can see your Civil War on Friday. You can get your Civil War comic on Saturday. Okay. You can maybe reread your other Civil War comic, and then get back here on Monday night for Civil War trivia hops. We're just we're riding this bandwagon. Yeah, we're riding it. Please, please, next year, give us Civil War trivia because I'm not exactly sure. Oh man, who There's is gonna, gonna be... be like. There's going to be trivia booth. from a lot of different Civil Wars. I'm excited. It's going to be good. I'm excited because, let's be honest, we've been doing too well. The, the hosts have been doing too well. Yeah. 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 Chat. Chats. It's always fun when the chat wins. Yeah, it is. Like, as much as I love my victory with Team Unicorn, you know, staff carrying me the oh, entire yes. way. Um, <laughs> is I, mean, I, was, I was on there once, and I won, and I enjoyed it a lot, but I still, I still felt a little bad. Yeah, you feel a little bit bad when you win. Okay. Not as not as bad as I felt good though. I felt better because I. <laughs> and I like. Just go. Um, and so. We can actually start the news now. All right, let's move on to some okay. news. So remember. Now you know what's coming on. Now you coming know up with here hyper... and in your movie theaters and everywhere you're watching stuff. And remember, we will talk about comics. We actually did our homework. Oh yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. So, today is May the fourth. So here are nine ways to celebrate Star Wars Day. Star Wars Day. So, there's a lot of different ways because there's a lot of different kinds of geeks. So one, in case you love those tests, you can figure out what Star Wars character you are. I one of those flow charts. Yeah. And I was just like one question away from being, I was, I was Jar Jar. I was this close to being like an evil Sith and I did the flow chart and it was and you're like, like Jar Jar. you're Jar Jar. And I was like, well, fine. Okay. I can see that. I don't. I don't. There, I was just, there was just like one question about would you be doing this or would you be smoking weed? And I was like, well, now I have to follow this tree. And then, <laughs> and then it just put me on Jar Jar and I was like, oh, okay, thanks. But I'm excited about, um, I haven't taken this yet and I'm really, really hoping I get Poe, whatever his name is. Poe Dameron? Sure. I'm a really great fan, guys. Poe Dameron, because hot damn, Poe Dameron looks so good. So good. I would kill to be him. Uh, you could also rewatch the series. That's a good plan. Uh, the Machete Order is my favorite, which is where you watch the fourth, fifth, and before you watch the sixth one, you watch the one, two, three, or you watch the uh, edited, edited one, two, three. That's, and then you watch six, and then you can watch seven. Whenever I do that, it usually works. I watch four and then five, and then I get to like the pod racing. Yeah. And then I fall asleep. And then like I wake up somewhere during the Clone Wars, fall back asleep during the Revenge of the yeah. Sith because I hate that one. And then somebody wakes me up for Jedi. Yeah. That's, that's how I do the, the machete yeah. order. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's good fun. Thank you, you and Insomnia. It's Poe Dameron. Poe Dameron. Hot Poe Dameron. All right, so watch the movie if you want. This weekend, last weekend, I watched Seven again and was like, this is still good. It's so good. You can test your knowledge. Some 
places are doing trivia. Like, you can go to a bar. You yeah. have to Google it. This list says Governor's Park in Denver. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe a lot of these people, maybe this is... Wait, this list is from a local news channel. Yeah, I Nine think this news, is so it must be from Everything one Denver. of this is Denver. So okay. So I'm just... Go Google... So some of these local things will be more useful to you if you're in Denver right now. Uh, like, but if you're in, like, Disneyland, just go to the Star Wars area. Yeah, Disneyland. go to Star Tours. Like, yeah. It's fun. Oh, yeah. All right. Try to incorporate Star Wars quotes into your daily conversation. You should be doing that anyway. Yeah, That's every day. That's should be doing. Every single day. May the force be with you. Or do or do not, there is no try. I should have just said that all the time with my students. I, I like, like I like this only the Sith deal in absolutes. <laughs> like that, well, somebody's like, something will never happen. I'll just look at them and be like, only the Sith deal in absolutes. And they're like, why do we hang out? Only the Siths deal in absolutes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. say it escape. I love A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. When I fall asleep, I, I, I watch those two because they're the best ones, and I like pod racing, and then I fall asleep for the rest of the prequels. I mean, let's let's think about this, guys. Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie, in my opinion. Is that the fifth one? That's fine. Oh, yeah. So, this is Hoth, man. The second half of the fifth movie and the first half of the sixth movie are my favorite movie because that's the coolest stuff. That's like the sand monster. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah. ah. You, got, you got Best Pin. You got the Sarlacc Pit. Luke gets his hand cut yeah. off. Yeah, it's just the best part. It's that, I think the, the Best Pin Luke Vader fight, I think, is the best, like, Jedi altercation in the whole series. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, because it's, it's the one where Darth Vader most unequivocally wins. Yeah, he, like, Win. Like, he I mean, like he beats Obi Wan Kenobi, but Obi Wan Kenobi bitches out in <laughs> in A New Hope. He's like, "Yeah, I guess I've done all the teaching you need. This is Which, let's be honest. Watching he me die he just... will work better than me escaping and maybe giving you some more. It's oh god. He's just like, oh crap! I don't want to have to give my secrets up. Stab me now! Stab me now! Oh yeah! Spoilers? Really? Spoiler alert from 1977. <laughs> you know. <laughs> One of the things I've always wanted to know in Star Wars is why do people, why or why not just people, why do some of them, if they're special enough, just dissolve when they get cut by a lightsaber? Because they're so in one with the Force that their matter becomes the Force and then they just disappear. That is not an answer I find satisfying. <laughs> that's a made up answer. Because that's my answer too. It's like, of course, it's just like, it's speed force, fuck you. Okay. Okay. So these are more things you can go see. Yes, I want to do. I'm so disappointed. There's this is in Denver. Places. So they can go to. So this is in Colorado. There's actually. I heard you can go into a real like creation of the Millennium Falcon in like London somewhere. Sweet. Yeah. In London. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of places you can go. You can go, and that would be cool. You and in Denver, I guess. Again, more Denver. There's an art museum that is doing a Star Wars exhibit. Hey, on that note, if you're in the Seattle area, like we are here uh -huh. in Redmond, uh, there is, of course, the Science Fiction Museum right there in central yeah. Seattle that uh, is going to have a lot of Star Wars stuff. Yeah, but so they, you could do that. The costume exhibit left already. So. That's true. That's true. There's no there's no special stuff. There's just the normal, hey, here's um, like an R2-D2 replica. Yeah. Uh, Commander Shepard brings up a good point that this Star Wars is based off a, a samurai movies, right? Some Japanese samurai yes. movies. And I haven't seen those yet. I hear they're amazing. And so maybe you can celebrate by watching that. Yeah, that's a good that's a good call. Yeah, uh, there's also there's like a run that you can do. There's like a 5K that is called the Kessel the Run, Kessel Run, which is hilarious because you know, 12 parsecs. Yeah, which, of course. I mean, yeah. So <laughs> it's okay. One, the place is called Dungeons and Drafts, which means it should be in Seattle. Like, yeah, why is right? that not in Seattle? Dungeons and Drafts? That just sounds that sounds like almost exactly like Mox Boarding House or yeah, something. Like yeah. there's like four places that should be called that already here. And so it's 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 a run and then a party. So again, we're gonna you can't really do that one. We're just gonna go to the party. Uh love Star Wars for a good cause. There's a make a wish that you can put money in for force for a change. If you donate enough, you can actually hang out with Mark Hamill. And then there's get crafty. Just super worth it. Because yeah. he's like the best. I, w I really want to cross-stitch some Star Wars stuff. Like, I've never cross-stitched, which is probably going to be a problem if I want to cross-stitch something super elaborate. It's interesting that you jumped right there. I was like, oh, do you cross-stitch? You were like, I've never cross-stitched. I've never done if it. If I'm going to make a Star Wars thing, I guess it's going to be cross-stitched. Uh, I would... Oh. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, hey. Zach? I heard you were sick. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh... 
I'm better, mainly because Tony brought us the world's most magnificent air purifier. Mm -hmm. I woke up this morning, couldn't breathe, and my eyes were swollen shut, and I came over here early just so I could sit next to the air purifier and start clearing out. And now I feel pretty good until I go back outside. It's Star Wars Day. Yeah. May the fourth be with all of you. I thought for a second you were setting up the, no, I was sick of you. But it was yeah, I just thought he couldn't handle us anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're not here, we just talk like literally a mile a minute. Guys, sorry I'm not around much. Uh, there will be no Honesty Hour tonight either because we have to get ready for tomorrow, which is the big For Science Day. Science! For Science. We have a full, full day of shit that we're frantically, frantically trying to get together uh, to make happen tomorrow. Holy crap balls. It's going to be rough. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> they did it. They, they, they did it. Out of that, that, that right there says fuck on that screen several times. Oh, my God. <laughs> It says, and some of them say, fuck Zach. Is that going to be a problem? Is no, that... it's amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I'm just mad at myself for just now seeing it. You're just, you're just pissed you didn't come up with it first. Oh, God. Um, well, um, oh. anyway, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> can, you, um, can you try to talk for a we little have, bit? We have a very full day of things going on tomorrow, and I'm really excited about it. Um, um, God damn it. It's, it's, is that going to be a problem? Is no, that... it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I'm just mad at myself for just now seeing it. You're just you're just pissed you didn't come up with it first. Oh God. Um. Well. Um. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> can you, can um. You try to talk for a we little have, bit. We have a very full day of things going on tomorrow, and I'm really excited about it. Um. So. <laughs> let's see. Uh. It. We need you guys' help. Uh, we're gonna be sending out some tweets and some competitions and like a Gleam.io competition for you guys to win prizes. We're also gonna be on the front page of Reddit where we're gonna be doing an AMA and we'll need you guys to go ask the R Loop team questions. We're gonna be live answering questions all day long tomorrow. So uh, we'll need everyone's participation in the chat room to do that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We have so much to do to be ready. Um, this is all coming together really fast, but we think this is a great opportunity for us to bring in some new fans and get some like uh, front page support. We're gonna need you guys' help. I have an announcement to make. I have an announcement to make. So, we've been working, hey -o! That's a new subscriber. Laxwall11 just subscribed. So we have an announcement. This is an amazing announcement to make. Okay. Uh, we've been talking to the R Loop team about, okay, how do we incentivize our audience? Because they have an Indiegogo campaign, but I know it's going to be weird trying to get people to go over to Indiegogo and make donations. So tomorrow we'll be accepting donations on our account and at the end of the day giving 100% back to the R Loop Indiegogo. If we get to $15,000, no, wait, first, first, if we get to 10K, if we get to $10,000, we get to keep their crash test dummy from the contest and make him a part of the Hyper RPG team. That's so dumb. That's 10,000. It's amazing. I know, but uh, I will make it costumes. Now, the $15,000 goal, if we hit 15K, our loop will make Sharky their official mascot of the R loop. The Dummy will wear the shark costume while testing the pod on <laughs> the SpaceX track, the SpaceX track, which will be on national news and shit. And someone on their team will wear the sharky costume all weekend at the event. It's fucking perfect. So we gotta hit 15k tomorrow. Yeah, so definitely. So if you can't like throw money at this, <laughs> tweet it out so hard so that other people are like, yeah. why would Sharky be a test dummy? Just tweet it. Do you have yeah. a rich friend you haven't texted in a yeah. few months? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about this channel. I, uh, they're really worried about not fully understanding Twitch and they're just like, you know, we don't have much marketing experience. We're a team of 300 engineers. And when they wrote me back at that was their idea, I was like, no, you guys get it. This is <laughs> fucking brilliant. Yeah. This is amazing. What if we wear a shark costume? Yeah, you'll fit in just fine on Twitch. Uh, so we're going to need you guys' help tomorrow to just get the word out, get people excited about it. We're going to be doing all sorts of fun stuff. We've got liquid nitrogen cooking. We've got oh. paranoia GM'd by Dawn. Featuring a couple people like Claudia and myself. I'm allowed to talk. About um, I'm gonna have a co-host tomorrow. We're gonna be meeting her with her today, uh, tonight. Her three. We have so much going on. Uh, we're gonna have projects and little science experiments throughout the whole day. Now we are not scientists that work here at Hyper RPG. So unfortunately, some of the stuff we're doing isn't as highbrow as we want it to be, especially to pull it together within a week. But we're gonna try to make it as much fun as possible for you guys. Emily, why are you standing in the door? I'm being creepy. 
Emily's being really creepy. What is this? Your birthday is next week, but you're going to be out of town, so some lovely community members may have gotten you a gift, and there's a card. You have to read the card, though. I was purposely avoiding being around for my birthday because last Kremel, year on my birthday was birthday, one of the most Joe. uncomfortable things I've ever gone through in my life. They, they got me a bunch of presents and shit. Presents oh. make me uncomfortable. This is not... Okay, just open it. Open the card Love first, it. but first read the back of the card. It says overload on it. This is not a bill. <laughs> Which is hilarious because yesterday. I'm pretty like, sure if it said Overlord, I'm going to assume it's not a bill, but this is a brilliant card. But it'll get your bills sent to Overlord. God. It'll get bills written in Sharpie. Yeah. Stick figure, which is kind of perfect. <laughs> Early happy birthday, dude. Happy birthday, Zach, from White Wabbit, Arslan, and Negiyama. You mentioned that this was the first Spider-Man you ever read. Hopefully it will remind you why you love comic books or you can just make pogs out of it. Oh my fucking god, don't. I'm not opening that bag. <laughs> you have to open it. You, you have, have to open, open it. it. You have to open it. You okay. For, for a comic book fan like this, like, that look he's getting, I, I got that feeling just, like, residually off him. Like, oh my god, it's a copy of your first Spider-Man? I'm gonna freak out. I'm gonna freak out. You gotta read it. I don't wanna open the bag. <laughs> you have to do it. It's your birthday. You have to. <laughs> okay. Keep going. Do, do you need a chair? No. Oh my fucking god. I'm gonna freak out. I'm gonna freak out. I don't wanna. No. No. Let's kill it. I'm gonna kill it more likely without. I forgot my knife today. Is this really far away from Kaiju? Oh my. Oh my god. Keep it here. No. Explain Great. Oh, it's graded. Look at that. Oh, for fuck well sake. That would be an epic troll if it was not that. <laughs> a bunch of bubble wrap, or I guess like oh a graded. If it was like a My Little Pony comic. You this is a great goblin. <laughs> Good job, this guys. is the best gift I've ever seen anybody give anybody. Yeah. I have to remove myself from the room. <laughs> Good job. Very good job. <gasps> Holy shit. I'm gonna tell that story for like the next month. Yeah, yeah, that's a great- uh, Holy yeah. crap. Good job, this is the best gift I've ever seen anybody give anybody. Yeah. I have to remove myself from the room. <laughs> good job. Very good job. Oh. Holy shit. I'm gonna tell that story for like the next month. Yeah, yeah, that's a great... Uh, Holy yeah. crap, you yeah, guys. Yeah, that is the happiest I've ever seen Zach. So, um, thank you guys, really. A bunch of shit to clean up. Shh, we'll, we'll deal with that later. It's fine. I think, like, uh, Zach does a lot for this channel, and a lot, and he works really hard. Zach does a lot for this channel, you guys. So, I, it means a lot to me that you guys take care of him. Mm. So, I do want to say thank you guys. Like, this is a thing that, like cannot happen in other channels. It just doesn't. That was really awesome. That was really awesome. That was that was great, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think Zach is leaving the room because he might just start crying. Yeah, like legitimately. Yeah. I, I would. Like yeah. that's that's crazy. Especially like like that's getting getting like an actual 
you never think you're going to find something like that. There's all oh, those things that oh, you're like, oh, oh, oh he's back. We, we talked about it. So he came back to correct us. I love, hate all of you. Best birthday present ever. Fuck all of you. But thank you. Oh. There we go. There we go, team. We did it, team. We did it. Now What's we the issue number on that? Which issue is that? Amazing Spider-Man number 26. Whoa. It's going to be like volume two or something. I get the. I have a gift as well. And Claudia's got bubble wrap. <laughs> okay, that was fun. That was lots of fun. That's that's great. Let's look at some news. Yeah, let's actually do those. So, um, news. Zach is gonna be gone next week. Ooh. Um, Zach is gonna be gone next week. It's it's. Zach con. No Zach con. No Zach con. No Zach con. It's. I don't. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even know who's gonna be here next Wednesday with you. Yeah, neither do I. Oh, yeah. It might be done. So, guess what, guys? So, uh, The Killing Joke, which is a really great Batman book. Yes. Like, I've read it. Everyone, like, everyone loves it. It's getting that movie with Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy right. and Tara Strong. And All the everybody. people you want it to be. Uh, it's coming out. It officially August 2nd. They have the release date. August 2nd. However, they're going to be premiering it live at San Diego Comic-Con. <gasps> so if you can find your way to the <laughs> SDCC, uh, which is not easy. No. And probably already sold out or something. Um, and even harder, actually, is to find somewhere to stay in San Diego. Oh, right yeah. Weekend. Yeah. It's, it's literally like $15,000. Have you ever been? The hotel room. No, because I can't, can't afford to go to San Diego. Um, I've not been to SDCC. Um, but if I were to go any year, I <laughs> to see this movie early. It would be. I mean, here's the thing. That theater is going to get so full because oh, yeah. uh, San Diego Comic-Con does that whole, if you sit in the seat, you get to stay for as long as you want. Mm -hmm. So... It's going to fill up day one. That's what yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be It's going to be fine. It's going to be a great movie. I'm excited. I might do a viewing at my house because this is the kind of movie you view. Because mm. one time we watched Flashpoint Paradox. That's a good and, one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I agree with it's you. Rated, it's rated R. Which is I'm excited about that. Yeah, it is just They're going just like hundred percent, hundred percent, just rocking it. Like the last, the last, it wasn't R-rated, but an unrated project that that uh, Bruce Tim worked on, who's the big DC guy, was called Justice League Gods and Monsters. Oh, it's probably the best animated is, is, movie. Is that the uh, one where they're like kind of bad guys? Yeah, I yeah. That. I love Superman it. was like uh, was Wonder raised Woman? by Mexican immigrants. Yeah. Wonder Woman is a new god, and Batman is Kirk Langstrom, the yeah. Man Bat. Yeah. Um, you guys, if you guys like comics at all, Read see it. Justice yeah. League Gods and Monsters. This movie is super good. You can see there's like three YouTube prequels, or it's like five minutes, yeah. one for Superman, one oh, for Batman, so and cool. one for Wonder Woman. The Batman versus Harley Quinn one is oh my terrifying. It's, and then I saw the Wonder Woman one, and I love that she's like, if I was ever going to do a, a cosplay of a Wonder Woman, I would choose this Batman. Wonder Woman because her hair is super slicked back, and she's yeah. like, let's just kill it all. Like, and Wonder Woman to me has always been like a really, like, my favorite things are when she shows herself as strength and not even woman strength, but just strength strength, mm -hmm. which is a total, it's not like girl power. It's like, ah, and it's like, I will, I will run this sword yeah. through your fucking chest. Yeah. Like, and it, it, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. And the Batman one is really cool. That Batman one is so creepy. And the Superman one is like this baby version of Brainiac. Oh that my like God. Is, it's voiced by Tara Strong and is super sad. It's like this four it's, minute Superman video that made me cry. And I was like, what is it, going on? Gods and Monsters just does what everything, yeah. the alternate reality, what everyone wants to do it, but does it the best. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the best alternate reality Justice Leagues out there. Up there with like the yeah. pro or Red Sun. I've always thought that Justice League movies aren't for, or, or any comic book movies are not for kids. DC yeah. animated movies are not for yeah. DC made, they're for made adults. A few movies that were like they were all that all tied into or at least shared a style with the TV shows for a while. They did see Titans Trouble in yeah. Tokyo, yeah. Superman Brain Attacks, Batman, uh, the both Phantasm and the Batwoman uh -huh. movie. Uh, and then they started doing their own original movie, starting with Superman Doomsday. And that's their first, like, original animated yeah. one. And it's Superman so and Doomsday good. beat the shit out of each other in that movie. And there's, like, blood and death. And, uh, and yeah, they're not they're not kids' movies. Like, these guys. This, this is just Bruce yeah. Tim, the guy who was behind Batman the Animated Series, did that for so long that he's like, I just want to fucking make these movies. And they're all Yeah, they're all yeah, they're great. They're, they're great. all great except for Batman and Son. I love the chat. Like, the chat is doing a really good job of self-regulating. I know, they're all... Uh, I think it's, I think it's silly. And you guys, you guys, very sweet. Like Twitch, Twitch can get a reputation for being 
kind of toxic. Yeah. And I love that, like, you really don't have that problem on Harry Potter no. RPG. And it's no. not like everybody's getting, like, silenced and banned or anything. No. It's just that, like... They're, Not they're, everybody on the internet is a douchebag, and no. we get to prove that. And what I like is that you guys can kind of monitor yourself, and you guys know. Like, you guys know. Um, so thanks. I'm, I'm full of thanks today. It's May the 4th, and I'm full of thanks. So this came out, and I don't know I, I don't know if it's supposed to, like, so AMC is doing a new drama called Briggs Land, Briggs Land. and there will be a comic with it, and the concept of it is that it is a... Uh, they use a word, secludist. A rural secessionist community. Yeah. So the the creator Brian Wood, who uh, who has written a lot of stuff that off the top of my head I can't name, except for the only one that I've read, which is the Massive, uh -huh. um, which is amazing. Uh, he does a lot of these very political, politically conscious, socially conscious um, comic books. Uh -huh. they're, they're like never about superheroes. Um, he just uttered a new one about Vikings called mm. like Black Sail or something. Yeah. AMC, he, he got he got this comic book that hasn't come out yet, no. and AMC's already making a TV show of it. Yeah, because it's cool. It's a crime drama yeah. set in, like, its own policed world. Like, So it's, it seems like it's almost like an Amish crime drama, but they're not actually Amish. No, because they, they have technology. They just don't believe in American government, so they make their own government. So it's, it's going to be really, like, very different. Yeah. And I'm wondering if they're going to do a good job. AMC's well, been doing a good job with guns. Yeah, they have. They, I mean, they just... I, I worry that they're gonna in the next few years like AMC has picked up so many comic book properties in the last like yeah. three years and they just The Walking Dead is now on 32 weeks out of the year because there's two different oh, Walking wow. Dead shows 16 You're episodes right, of the main show 16 episodes of Fear so I worry that like they're just they're AMC is being treated like a cable net like like a network TV like they have so many viewers that they're just going way too hard way too fast but mm. Brian Wood is awesome like this this is the kind of story that he is best at telling, so I trust it to be good. I just don't like the first season of The Walking Dead. I thought was terrible because I read The Walking Dead. Uh -huh. It got good, but it was like no, it, it was different. Yeah, it, it had it, it, it didn't have any of the same themes. It was a good show, but it didn't have any of the same themes. And if this show Briggs Land doesn't have the themes of the comic book, then it just becomes this sort of anarchist thing. Yeah, and it might, but it's exciting. It's, we'll see. It's breaking news. Yes, yeah, so that's exciting. If you're a Brian Wood fan, you should be excited about that. I'm not gonna look at that one. Um, so we're not gonna click a lot of this because it's really tiny and bad to see on our little monitor. But they are doing comics to prepare for Overwatch because let's be honest, Overwatch publicity is ridiculous. It is. It's ridiculous. everywhere. And they're doing the third comic, which is gonna be digital, uh, and it's gonna be called. Junkrat and Roadhog going, going legit. legit. So it's about those two, which are pretty adorable. I like their little brother um, friendship. I like mm. I like family stories, and I like that they're gonna be going legit. And let's I'm just gonna know they're not gonna do that well. Please take the and, and it looks like Blizzard is publishing it on their own, yeah. which is not usually these people are like, hey, Dark Horse, publish us a comic for us or no. Do it on so Marvel's th imprint. there's two extra free pages that you can look at. It's in, it yeah, no, yeah. No, it's just it's, it's CBR it's, is so hard to bring full screen for some reason with their preview pages. So but it looks pretty. It doesn't. It's but I, that looks cool. It's not. I would say not as polished as comic books are, but I mean it's gorgeous. I mean it's. I've I've definitely read comics that are less polished than this. Yeah. Look at that. It's trying to. Uh, That's pretty. It's trying to replicate that CG uh, kind of art style like, that they have in the game, yeah. and I'm assuming let's. I don't know how people work as hard as they need to for these comics. Like they write fast and they draw fast, and so this I'm assuming took months to finish. Like they might have had Maybe, a little. I bit mean, of time. I, this to me doesn't look actually that any different than a normal comic, if that's a thing that exists. Mm -hmm. Like this to me just looks like I, I imagine an artist probably said a month draw on this comic. Like the, the usual rate is that the writers get to write. Like it's a lot. It's e I don't want to say it's easier to be a writer. But it's a lot faster to be a writer. You can come up with six issues in a week. Yeah. As an artist, there's nothing you can do. You can have a lot of great ideas really fast. You can't put out 22 pages no, you in a week. You just can't do that. Well, you can write a comic book in a day, though. You can't draw a comic book in a day. So uh, the art is always what slows it down. It's yeah. usually a month per comic. Yeah, and what I enjoy with this is that, like, so I, I absorb a lot of Japanese media, and manga artists, like, they go all on their own. They usually have their own writers and their own colorists, and then... When they're really good, they finally get people who can work under them. But, like, they they produce a lot faster, but they also burn out, I think, really hard. Yeah. And that's something to be said about, like, there's 
there's there is definitely rotating art in yeah. any medium like this because yeah it's you it's art is hard art is hard drawing is hard art is and, hard and, and it's breaking it's, like, news. it's bad for your back and your rib like it's you gotta you gotta be able yeah. to take some time off I remember reading about an online art, artist who was learning how to draw with their left hand because like this one was just going through carpal tunnel so like oh, they man. would do uh, pencil with their left and then they would color with their right because they still need to use their right but they needed to like give this a break be cool if they could do it at the same time that ambidextrous people right like drawing one face over here and coloring one over here yeah that would be ridiculous that would just be crazy okay so you told me about this is connected to one of the books you've read yeah the one that you just picked up actually uh, yeah there is <laughs> there is a Chinese Superman debut soon yes. I'm excited to see how Superman changes I'm always excited to see how they, they mess with it so yeah, well they've got they've got this new series called The New Superman coming out pretty soon. And it's uh, it's being written by a guy named Gene Wen Yang, mm -hmm. who he's been writing super, he wrote Superman for like 10 months over over the last year, which was in my opinion pretty mediocre. Uh -huh. But he's also written um, two books that are excellent, one called American Born Chinese, which is semi autobiographical. Oh, yeah. yeah. My friends really like that. She teaches book. English. Another yeah. one, another one called uh, yeah, it's popular book for, for English Young classes. Adults. Yeah, because um, it's a different viewpoint. Yeah. Uh, and another one is called Boxers and Saints, which is like two books, one called Boxers, one called Saints, mm -hmm. and it tells the story of the Boxer Rebellion in China. Oh. Um, one from the view of a young boxer and one from a view of a young Chinese girl who gets um, sort of adopted by the missionaries. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and Saints. So yeah. so yeah, so you have the two sides of the Boxer Rebellion. Um, that book I think is absolutely amazing. Uh, I That's highly recommend thing. it to anybody. Um, so, but anyway, he's going to be writing this new book about this new Chinese Superman. Oh. Uh, and so in this book that came out uh, today, Batman Superman. Wait, you uh, got to make sure the camera can see it. Yeah. Batman Superman. The uh, the Batman and Superman go to China, and that's why the, gr the 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 Chinese superheroes, the Great Ten, are on the cover here. Oh, really? I love these guys. The Great Ten are awesome. August General and Irons is their leader. I cannot wait. Uh, great. And so anyway, they find the Chinese Superman, and he's a baller. And well, we don't really know yet. Oh. Um, he's in a tube, so he's more the Chinese Superboy. Um, <laughs> if if you know, you're a stickler like me. Chinese Superman. But yeah, so the Chinese Superman debuted today, and that's exciting because uh, it's going to be one of the new Rebirth series come A lot June. of those. There's always it all redoing in June. Yeah, there's a, there's a re reboot is the wrong term, but yeah, there's a bunch of, there's, there's a wave of number ones coming called Rebirth. So we're going to need Joe in for this. We, yeah, we, so we need a Mask is getting a comic book reboot as well as a movie. M-A-S-K Mask, not Jim Carrey the Mask. Oh, not and, the and green mask. One before that. Um, so... We're both too young to know what that means. Yes. I thought, okay, I will be honest. All I know from Mask is from a, a clip from Robot Chicken, which is an adult swim show. That makes sense. And I literally know nothing about Mask. Thanks. Nice. And, and uh, yeah, come in quickly. Oh, Joe says Mask is the shit. Uh, uh, Joe likes Mask. Apparently it was a badass series in the 80s. 1980s, and, yeah. Oh, the Mad Max is, uh, so somebody saw Mad Max and was like, oh. get Mask out there. I had an older brother, so it was, a, it was a kind of like a, I played with the toys and watched the cartoon a bunch back in the day, but Mask was Mobile Armor Strike Command, and they went against Venom, which was... Command with a K? Command with a K, and Vicious Evil Network of Mayhem was the guys, but I just remember the toys, like the main character, Matt Tracker, he had this red Camaro, which transformed into like a plane, and they all had these masks, which had all these little powers. It was fucking awesome. The toys were great. The toys so are... coming back. The theme song was awesome. We'll have to look at that up later. So... It's happening, guys. It's happening. So it looks like it looks like we had some mask fans in the chat. So you guys are getting mask back. Fleckery is telling us it was bad ass. Badass. It looks pretty F. cool. Badass AF. So it, I mean, I'm excited. This is a mask for the 21st century with a diverse team of specialists who are chosen for a top secret program with a painful learning curve. Ultimately, each participant will have to choose a side, and no matter which side they choose, the consequences will be great. All right. So, it will be modernized. I'm trying to see when it's actually coming out. Oh, Elon Musk is in there. <laughs> I don't know how. I guess he's, it's, it's, it's Elon Musk. Wait, scroll back up. Scroll back up. What does that say? Okay, that makes more sense. The uh, writer goes on to talk about the main character, Matt Tracker, and how he will be a cross between Elon Musk and Idris Elba. Um, that is an interesting pairing. Matt yeah. Tracker, though, was the name that Joe just dropped, so it sounds like you're getting your same main character, I guess. Good. 
uh, the va- the main villain is Miles Mayheim Mannheim. Miles Mayhem Mannheim, a master manipulator, brilliant military strategist, and control freak whose plans to rule the world are extremely close to fruition. Ooh, it's part of Venom. It will be a true force. I like the acronyms, mask and venom. Yeah, I'll stand for something. No, it's great. I like how they're all things that are like from other sets of fiction. Like we all know Venom from like from Cobra. Yeah, right, and yeah. then we've got Mask from, like, The Mask, but it's yeah. a different thing not. from the But they're not. They're not. He just is going to make talking about things more confusing. It's fine. It's fine. I'm excited for it 10 years when there are things from the 90s that I could be like, how'd you not know about this? I know about everything to some rah, other kids. Rah, rah, rah. Some other kids talking about a reboot. How could you not know about uh, Sailor Moon? <laughs> Rocco's Modern Life. Oh, God, that joke's so good. That. Yeah. Cat Dog. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, Cat Dog was like, Cat Dog was great. Cat There's going to be a great. lot of people who are our age that are going to be like, I am fucking watch Cat Dog. No one watched Cat yeah. Dog, except for us. Oh, We're the only awesome. two people who know what Cat Dog is. Nickelodeon was better than Disney, and not enough people understood that. No, no, they didn't. Okay, so, we are looking, we got one more thing, and then we're going to talk about comic books. How and dare you suggest Cat Dog wasn't that good? <laughs> Cat Dog was the shit. Uh... So this is a Spider-Man samurai action figure. And we were talking about this earlier, and you said, is this detachable? Yeah, like, the geek in me can't, like, handle handle the idea of, like, all right, so he's a samurai Spider-Man. He's got a grappling hook, but he's, like, shooting it like it's webs. So what does that mean about the biology of samurai Spider-Man? Does, it, does he have, and like, it's a, a fucking crank? action figure. This isn't even in a comic, as far as I know. Uh, I don't know very far, though, because I don't read Spider-Man comics. But it looks sweet. I like the look of this. No, it's in, it's got poseable, which is really cool. Uh, it will come out on sword. April 28th, and it is 950 yen, which is about $86 in the U.S. And then there's shipping. 9,500 yen. Thank you. I can't read numbers. Math teacher. Uh, <laughs> I'm ex- I I just I, I want to be way more excited about it than I really am. Like I want to love this, and I can't tell why I'm just like, eh, eh, this is a thing. <laughs> But look at him. It looks cool. It's I like so cool. What I like sells how- me on it is the whole, you know, the 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 traditional like s- the the armor that's very segmented. Yeah. The way it resembles webbing. Yeah. That's kind of what like sells me on it is that the the the, the like the mask and the armor can sort of all have that texture. Yeah. I like that. I just real now realize in this view that it has like that that smile that looks almost like symbiote. Yeah. But it's not because that's just how the masks used to be made. There's no zoom. There's no zoom. Yeah, from closer you can kind of see it. Yeah. 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 Um, it's cool. I'm badass samurai Spider-Man. I have not been buying as many uh, action figures as I really want because then my house would just all be action figures and I would eat no food. All right. Very slippery slope. Uh, what is the website I go to to look at comic books? It is bitlist.alterego. Comics? I wish I I don't know. Zach, Zach, Zach. we, we weren't prepared. Ago. They don't. I wish they had a link. Every time I try to find it, oh, oh it's, it's in the, the uh, yes. We were prepared. We just didn't we, know we it. didn't look at the thing. Um, Wait, where is it? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's at the top. I might keep going up. No, you're wrong. I believe we could find it. I want. They don't have a link like on their website. No, which surprises this is, me. That, there it is. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. It's not. It's it's not bit list. It's sub list. We That's where I was it. on. Ah. Uh, uh. Sublist dot alter ego collectibles dot com. Now I'm gonna remember this. Now I'm finally gonna remember. Okay. Sublist dot alter ego collectibles dot com. Uh, our good friends here at Alter Ego in Crossroads here at Redmond. So this is it's top. Wait. So have we have this. Yeah. No. It's yeah. Uh, we're good. Is this, is this our ours, city. our yeah. city? Okay. So this is our, the local comic shop here in Redmond at Crossroads. This orders these comics uh, by selling by 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 the, by to what they're subscribe by their subscriptions at the local store. Okay. So this shows us the order of the comics by some like more people are reading Star Wars here at the Crossroads than are reading anything else. Um, this might not be today's. Yeah, I don't think so because Saga was last week, right? Yeah, I don't think it yeah. is because I remember noticing when I went to the store today that I was surprised Wait that there point. wasn't. Here we uh, go. That the only Star Wars go. book was Poe Dameron number two. Here we go. Here's, here it is. Man, so, people love Star Wars at the store. Yeah. Well, of course everyone likes Star Wars. We like Star Wars. So Star Wars. this is the number one. It's Star Wars. I remember you guys talking about how you weren't really, it, for Zach at least, it didn't feel good enough. 
Yeah, I haven't I haven't read this, but he the way he mentioned it was that yeah, a lot of the an, an adaptation to a movies like this is really hard because you gotta write the characters like the actor speaks and, and that, it's, it's hard to direct the reader to read at that specific pace yeah um so i i have not read this so i can't really say anything about it but people are loving people all the Star are Wars loving books. It. And, like charles soul is a writer i'm in general a fan of yeah uh, i'm digging it i will probably see the problem is i'm a person who so waits on the big books like that, because I'm a trade waiter, which sucks because then sometimes I miss everything. And those, it's trade waiting is fine. Like I don't, I don't ever want to like hate on trade waiters because I totally understand it. But it's it's like waiting for Netflix. It does not help the book. No, it doesn't help like, the book, and sometimes it doesn't get there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, sometimes it doesn't get there, and, and sometimes by the time it gets there, it's been canceled. If you like a book and you really want it to continue, buying the it. individual yeah. issues is the best way to support it financially. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean, like, if, if they're selling a lot of trades or something, that's a good way of getting yeah. a character back. Yeah, more than a, more or an artist or something. So then we got so we Invader Sim. We got some Zim. TV stuff. We got Invader Sim, where I think we actually have this one We here. do, we I do. I did not read it. Uh, I, so we have so many comics on the table today, We have so today, many guys. comics. We, so, we gonna, literally were like, let's read. Uh-oh, Joe's coming in. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Joe's coming in. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Something. How did comic we forget book day, something? Comic book day. We're gonna open some books on oh, no. comic book day. Zach's on my left. You're on my right. Comic book day. Okay. Oh, thank you, Joe. Thank I can't you, believe Joe. we almost forgot. But I'm. Can't believe chat let us forget about the song. I know. Usually, usually Zach and I have to do it reluctantly because they won't let us not. <laughs> Silly them. But it's Silly okay. I, them. I'm gonna move these over here so I can like grab yeah, them. Yeah. Please, please. So, uh. How I do this is I always do the ones that one have females on the cover as the ones I like to read, or two have the most interesting looking covers. Yeah, this is Invader Zim. Okay, oh, this is number yes. two. So uh, I always loved Invader Zim, uh, reading the cartoon. It was always a really good one for me, and I'm is it, it's probably like the same writer. Um, it's some of the, let's see, it's written by Eric Trueheart and Jonin Vasquez, who yeah, wow, look, art style is really cool. Yeah, it's it's very cartoony. It's very cartoony, and that's it's so nice. It's so nice to be very cartoony. Um, oh yeah, this looks exactly like, like the show. The show, um, so which is excellent. Like yeah. X Men ninety two doesn't look exactly like the show. It looks no. a lot like the show, but not quite. No. Exactly. So if you like if you like the show, start reading more Invader Zim's. Is this a limited run or is this gonna be a permanent? It run? looks like it's an ongoing. This is number nine, and usually oh. it's Cause miniseries don't last that long unless they're a big deal. Yeah. Um, Invader Zim isn't going to be a 12-issue miniseries. It'll be an ongoing, though. Just like the My Little Pony, which is still plugging along, of course. I'm not reading that. Yeah. So then we have My Little Pony, which it's great. I'm glad My Little Pony exists. Uh, it's number cutie 28. Mark Crusaders oh, the cutie. Visit. They are my favorite characters oh. in all of My Little Pony. I, I, I was watching the series with my roommates because they all love My Little Pony, and I have a love-hate relationship with My Little Pony that I'll get into in a long time. But... I'm excited that they got their cutie marks. That was one of the best episodes ever. And I mean, literally their cutie marks is a way to talk about puberty. Like, let's be honest here. Yeah. It is such a way to, yeah. and it doesn't, it's a good way to talk about puberty. Mm. So I'm excited. And even more so, I'd like, like more of the discussion about all these people like, I know what I'm gonna do. And like, when you're young, actually not even when you're young, everybody until you're like 97 is still kind of like, is this my calling? Yeah. This is what I want right. to do. While it feels like everybody around you has figured it out. It feels like that everybody knows, like, oh, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing and I meant to do this my whole life. And you're like, what? How yeah. can I find that? And these characters do that. See, the show's deeper than you think. The show is good. And I'm, I'm sounding like such I a brony. Like your... I'm not like a super brony. No. I watched the show and I liked the show. I sort of just fell off because, you know, you fall off shows. So I've watched like four and a half seasons. Yeah, yeah. I'll catch up someday. I, I do a lot of pick and choosing where I'm like, this episode sounds great. I know they did like a Justice League episode where they were they superheroes. Uh... So I got to watch that. Ah. Uh... Oh, that's good. Okay, so then we got Spider Gwen is number four. Uh, number eight, it's Spider Women Part Five. So it's gonna continue with Silk, because I know there's also a Silk comic that we got. Yeah, there's a crossover between Silk and Spider Gwen and uh, something else. Uh, the art still looks amazing. This cover looks good. I mean, as it always does. I'm excited because I currently they're still kind of merged together. I kind of want to see what they do independently. Yeah. I, did, I wasn't able to read this one. This was underneath my pile. And I just, instead I did, um, what did I do instead? I went to the bathroom. <laughs> I went to the bathroom instead of reading it. It was a long show. So, Walking Dead, tell me about it. Walking Dead. Oh, I love The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead you. is the comic that got me into comics. Really? Yes. It was your Amazing Spider-Man. Do you want to? Yeah, oh, my, my, well, 
Yeah, my first my first comic wasn't The Walking Dead, but it was the one that started get, getting me to go to a comic book store on a regular basis, uh -huh. and it was all downhill from there. Just your entire life. Yeah, it was just like, I was like, oh, this writer's really good. I'll pick up this other comic by this writer, and I started reading Invincible. Yep. And then I was like, oh. oh Invincible's so good. And then I go to the comic store, I'm like, oh, there's a number one on the shelf. I'll just start picking up this. And then the new 52 happened, and there were 52 number ones in a month, and then I was trapped. Then you are stuck. That's my comic book origin yeah. story. So <laughs> the description is simply led to slaughter. For yes. this comic here on the solicitations. Oh, wow. Which I'm not even certain that's that accurate of a uh, description because it's like... Is it, is it building or is it... It's building. In the, last ep in the last issue, the biggest villain in The Walking Dead mythos, Negan, escaped prison. And that's Oh, really right, because I remember you talking about how that was a choice that they made of yeah, not killing him. they made not to him. kill him and, and it's going to bite him in the ass. So he... In, in, in this issue, he meets our new villains, the Whisperers, who wear zombie skin uh, and hide, hide amongst the zombies. Uh, and I love it because he's... I don't want to give too much away because it came out today. We need to figure out what the, what the spoiler rules yeah, are. And I think, it's hard talking about things that come out on the day they come out because yeah. we don't talk about them, but... Well, with, well, what's nice with Walking Dead, I think you did a really good job of mentioning the Whispers are happening and you've been like, okay, that's gross. I want to watch it. Um, I also enjoy that people in the chat... Again, I love talking about chat. Um, are talking about their opinions. Yeah. Like Darius and I giving us a little bit more about Spider Gwen. And a lot. I it mean, was starting in the middle of a story arc. It's issue five of a crossover. Yeah. So, so yeah, that I'm happens. A lot, and I I remember talking about that when I picked up a comic, being like, I don't. Yeah, I think you read Silk last time and yeah. you were like, I have no idea what's going on, but ah, it was fun. Yeah. So I, I, I feel bad that. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the things that about comic books that are really hard is that you have to start early. Or there has to be a there, like there should be like a little sticker that says we're starting an arc or like yeah. a, a green and they actually, or a red. It's a funny you say that because Marvel started to do that. Oh really? They have started to put things on their uh, on their books that say the new story so and so starts here. The oh. problem is it's not always that accurate. Oh good, like, I'm glad. That, that's true for all new Inhumans right now. Like the new story, but it's like it's issue seven and it's continuing. Like it's a new arc, but it's not super new. But the, the trick for comics, unfortunately, is the only real trick is. Just keep reading, because there's, yeah, there's a point at forever. which, like, there's never a point at which they're not dealing with new stuff. But there yeah. will be a point at which it's not new to you anymore, and they forget about that, and now you know the history yeah. or something. Like, yeah. there's never a point where you could jump in and there won't be backstory. But every writer who writes comic books knows that every comic is somebody's first. Yeah. So they're sort of. So they try to. They try to show you what the character is in like one picture. Like that. Yeah, it can be kind of annoying movies. how like I read all the comics, so I have had to see Batman's parents die <laughs> like a couple times every year for years because like well you gotta because you have to set up that yeah. vis that visual reference point for readers and so if like you have it. So I have to see keep seeing the iconic moments so that they remain iconic moments. Right with the pearls and the the dead yeah. and the oh yeah every time okay so let's keep going because oh, yeah. I I'm just like the Walking Dead there's this one great moment I just love it though because oh, I've been I just where these these whispers don't have names and one guy's like we have no names <laughs> I am Beta and Negan looks at him and goes that's definitely a fucking name <laughs> but whatever like I love how he's just like that's I am neither name. amused nor intimidated he's literally like whoa you're scary look at this guy like it's it's so, it's so great I I. I think it's hilarious that we don't have names, and it's like, and then I'm I'm beta. Yeah, but I, I'm beta. It's like you just gave yourself a different name. Yeah, dude. it's just not your real name. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man number twelve. We've got this one. It's got a okay. really pretty cover. It's got Alex... a really pretty cover. It's continuing with with which Spider-Man is it working with? This is this is Peter Parker. Okay, this is actually Peter this Parker. Is Dan Slott doing Peter Parker, um, much to Zach's chagrin. It actually says in the corner, Regent makes his destructive debut. Mary Jane is back, but with Tony yeah. Stark. Yeah. So this is, look at this, the beginning of an arc. Power play begins here. The Amazing Spider-Man, Iron Man, Spider-Man, and the rest of all new, all different Avengers come together for this huge story. Oh, that means it's got Peter and Miles. That's oh. what it means. I was like, the Amazing Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Spider-Man. But yeah, Miles is going by Spider-Man, and Peter's going by the Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so apparently, <laughs> the most dangerous foe from Secret Wars, Regent, makes his true intentions known. I read Secret Wars. Regent was not, uh, pretty sure it was Doom. It's, pretty sure it was Doctor Doom. It's this new in the second one. Like the what? second, the, or the third Secret War. Is Regent going to yeah, be Yeah, just talk about the most okay. recent Secret okay. So there's Secret Wars in like the 70s, I want to say. Uh -huh. I should know, the, I should really know when that was. And then they did a Secret Wars 2. <laughs> Nobody cared about that. And so then just this last year, 
uh, they did another Secret Wars, which is called Secret Wars. Okay, okay. It's been okay. long enough that you don't okay. need to give it a number. So, anyway, apparently the bad guy region from that is now here and has made intentions known. I'm right. curious about that because I'm curious about Secret Wars, but I don't remember Regent at all playing into Secret Wars because I remember, like, really all I got out of it mostly was just Doom, Reed, and Miles. And then everybody else was there to serve Doom, Reed, and Miles. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm such a sucker for romance. I, one of the reasons I really love Green Arrow and Black Canary is because they've stuck through each other for so long. Yes. And so that's how I always felt with Mary Jane. And now that like Mary Jane is divorced, it's too, it's too rough for me. It's yeah. too rough for me. I think it happened me. a while ago though. I think it's been I know. a long time since I'm, Peter and Mary. But I still can't, I still can't. I can't. You can't break my ships. Can't do it. I understand that. Okay. So next we have Invincible Iron Man, number nine. Tony and Rhodey are best friends on and off the battlefield, but their friendship is tested in ways it never was before as new power plays, again, it's making that thing, a connection. In the Marvel Universe, reveal themselves in a bloody and dangerous fashion that threatens everything they stand for. A Civil War II prologue story. Like we mentioned, Civil War II sort of begins this Saturday. Well, that's right. That's yeah. right. So, so it's a prologue for that. It's time to set it up. They, uh... Thanks for resubbing. Somebody at Marvel leaked the issue. The Free Comic Book Day no. issue. So, uh, I'm not going to tell you how to find it, because we don't approve of those, no. but I've read it. No, just walk in and you get it for free. But I have read it. Oh. Um, and so, it seems, yeah, uh, I like the idea. This then is probably setting that up. Um, Rhodey seems to be playing a pretty big role in it. But mostly it's Tony. It's going to be Tony versus uh, Captain Marvel. We know Again. that. Again. Uh, Captain Marvel this time. Tony, oh, Tony right. Stark Thank and you. Carol Danvers. Thanks Thank for you. following, by the way, Magori. Oh, thanks. Um, it's hard to keep track of all the things. But yeah, Invincible Iron Man number nine. Invincible Iron Man has been Mar Marvel's flagship title since the reboot, which yeah. did nothing. Um, really, all it did, all, the only oh, no, thing I it lost did was the get website. rid of Fantastic Four. Um, I <laughs> Oops. It's fine. I got it. I figured it out. So. Oh, God. Yeah, of course, this is uh, Brian, uh, the Brian Bendis book is where to go for a lead-in to the Brian Bendis event that is starting soon. Yes. Okay, so this is sad. Person I, number two. I didn't know Empress was in the pack. It wasn't in the stack. Uh, did, we not, did we not get number two? You read number one, right? No, I don't think I read any of them. No? Okay. I read, a well, lot of, I read a lot of different ones that aren't on the top of the pile, which makes me laugh. Like, all the ones I've read are low. Yeah, that happens to me, too. I'll, okay, I'll read all these books, and I'll be, like, all prepared, and then yeah. it'll be like, the all right. Ones, the ones that I'm interested in are not the top ones, because I think uh, the top ones are what people want. So what is Empress? Can you give us a summary of what Empress is about? I can't. I don't know what it is. Okay, let's click it. But let's find out. Let's find out. Okay, so... Empress Queen Empora is on the run from her husband oh, along with her kids. Oh, this is the new Mark Miller book. <laughs> I only read like one Sorry. paragraph. I, I like from that first sentence, I'm inter intrigued because it looks like it's fantasy, but also fantasy sci-fi. Yeah. Mark Miller, I mean, the, the creative team is solid. Mark yeah. Miller's hit or miss for me, but a lot of people really like him. Uh-huh. Um, he's, you know, one of those Scottish writers. No, it looks, to me, it looks really interesting. Uh, uh, no wonder it's selling. Sazen in the chat has asked, do you want to read up on Captain Marvel and what's the best starting place? Um, oh, good question. Which Captain Marvel? Because... Isn't Captain Marvel a girl? Well, <laughs> there's there was a company called Fawcett Comics in the 50s that uh -huh. had Captain Marvel. Billy Batson would say the word Shazam oh, yeah. and turn into Captain Marvel. Which, yeah. And then Stan Lee named his fucking company Marvel. <laughs> so... And then he created a character named Captain Marvel. Stan Lee's a hero and he's a legend. He gave us all these things, but he was a shrewd businessman who like, there's something to be said about his close partner, Jack Kirby, hating the shit out of him. But let's move on. I love Stan Lee. Um, I don't think you can hate Stan Lee. <laughs> exactly, you can't. Uh, but you can recognize that people do. Yeah. So Captain Marvel, uh, the D DC bought Captain Marvel um, because they sued them for him for, for being too much like Superman, uh -huh. which DC did that in the 60s. Oh man, actually in the 50s, everybody who was creating a Superman-like character was getting sued for yeah. it yeah, yeah, all yeah. over the place. So, there's two Captain Marvels. You gotta go with uh, Marvel or DC's Captain Marvel. Uh, Armut 1917 17 says, For Carol Danvers, start with Kelly Sue DeConnick's run. He is right. Nice. Well, is. I don't know why I assume who is that. It? Armut, uh, who? Which Armut. One? Armut, I don't know. Okay. I don't know who that is. No, one I, of our viewers. No, I like it. And no, they know I mean, what, he's new. Thank what you. to read. Thank you for coming in, Armut, and giving us some information. Uh, yeah, because I always thought, because that was something that I always got confused about, because there's Captain Marvel, 
super awesome chick, and is also Billy Baxton, which I also enjoy. Not to mention in <laughs> in Marvel, there was Marvel, Captain Marvel. Oh my god. Carol Danvers was Ms. Marvel, who became Captain Marvel. There's been like there's been a lot of Captain yeah, Marvels. And at so Marvel. I get confused a lot. So, so yeah, it gets it gets. We're uh, allowed to be confused. Okay, so Wicked and Divine. I mean, it's always going to be gorgeous. This every is, Wicked I feel, and Divine. I feel embarrassed that I'm not. This is there's, there, there are a lot of books that like everybody's reading, and I'm not because I'm reading oh, a lot of books that other I people aren't. You borrow. And this I is have one of them. I have the first omnibus that I got. At well, I, I'm not lacking access to it. It's just one of the books I'm not reading that like it's everybody's just, reading. I'm just like okay. It's gorgeous. The issue is that it's gorgeous, and I love I love bright colors so much. So. And I'm really curious about the mythology and pulling that together. I didn't get to read this one, mostly because I didn't want to spoil it. <laughs> but it's going to continue. Uh, it looks like it's part two Gods of the Underworld, which means there's going to be a part three. Stuff definitely doesn't explode. That doesn't happen. Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, and then there's the new Miss Marvel, which is the adorable yes, young Kamala one. Khan. Yeah. Um, who everybody loves. Did you read this one? Um, it's Marvel. God. The, the uncanny. I'm yeah. not reading the Buncanny X-Men. Uh, I'm enjoying the cover. Oh, okay, the Apocalypse yeah. War. Yeah, this is part of the Apocalypse War, which is why it's got Angel and Archangel on there. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend is reading the Apocalypse War, so I'm sort of just hearing about it oh, in like, yeah? exclamations. Like, oh my God, this happened. And wait, why did one of the horsemen... In, in the beginning of one book, there were four horsemen. And then at the end of that book, a year passes, and it's like different horsemen. So oh. I don't even know what's going on in this series, but I'm not reading it, so I have a reason to not know. Mm. But... Uh, Ken Lashley and Cullen Bunn, who are the creators of this book, are both very talented. So good. if you're a fan of the series, then this if will If you're look a fan good. of X-Men, this looks good. Yes. Okay, so then we got Rat Queens, which I th Queens. I've heard rumors that there is a cameo from some people. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I heard there was a cameo of Geek and not Geek and Sundry, critical role in it. And that might not be this one, but maybe the one from before. So that's cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, then we got Black Widow 3, Black which Widow. I purposefully didn't read because I didn't want to yuck, yuck, Zach's yum, yum. But we have it. We do. It's funny. A, uh, a good friend of mine who was all about Wade and Sammy's Daredevil run it dropped it this week because he, yeah. was, he was like, I just can't. He finds it boring. But... Uh, from the way he describes it, you get all the Marvel stuff is going to be second hand from me. I know a lot of people. Yeah, who which read is Marvel, fine. And I'm, I mean, I'm the guy who tells them all about DC stuff. But uh, it's it's apparently a very quiet book. Not a lot of words, a lot of no, action, is, a lot of I didn't notice, a lot of badass it? spy versus spy. Like it seems like if you don't necessarily care about Black Widow or like spy you, stuff, yeah, then or or you want char like it's not very character driven. There's not much of it's not like very protagonist yeah. heavy. It's uh, action heavy, um, which is cool. But again, keep in mind that I am not reading this, and that's just things that people I know say. Um, from looking through that, it looked a lot way more interesting to, to me than the first issue that I read. Like, because it looks like it's trying to tease out pictures of Black Widow without being like, I'm a girl, look at me. There's some uh, backstory stuff. Uh, there was this really cool shot. Red Room by Morning Spies Take Warning. The Weeping Lion has Black Widow under his thumb. Until Natasha learns his true motivations, she's trapped playing his personal weapon and spy. He's controlling the best in the world and sending her to the place she never wanted to go. Russia? Home. Yep. I wonder if then this is where what I said about it lacking some character development yeah, takes it, a big change. If, yeah. if it gets into who Black Widow was uh, in the Black Widow yeah. program. Because to me, that's the most interesting part of her character. Yeah, I want to know about like the Russia. It looks like it's pulling some ideas of her being a child and the, the, the ballet thing. So that's more exciting to me. Uh, oh, yeah. BT Dubs. This is the last Rat Queens for a while because it's going on hiatus. So check it out. Like we said, art is hard. They need breaks. I actually kind of dig that that's happening. Image is doing this uh, basically as a, it's basically their business model now. Yeah. We'll it's do an arc breaks. of like five or six, give them like two or three uh, weeks off, mo two or three months to like get, get built. Cause they're, it, they're monthly already. They're not oh, weekly. okay. So, so two months off is just two, you know, that you don't I don't get. know what this is. D um, Rick Devolution. Remender's De Devolution. What's a bastion? Uh, What's a bastion of forward thinking and the art San Francisco is now anything but. Can our crew survive the home of the most savage tribe of thralls alive and make it to the re evolution agent? Um, huh. So it looks like it's like a. Man, yeah, we're getting all we're getting all the Rick Remender, like all the all the writers that Zach is following are oh, came, good, came out today. Good job. These are all oh, Mark Miller, Rick Remender, this and Karen Gillen. This is this not was in not in our pile. pile. So uh, it looks like it's like kind of that idea of like a post apocalyptic where they go back in back in evolution. So it's, it's, it looks good. 
I, I don't have an opinion on it. Sorry, guys. Then we got Steven Universe, which is great. I love Steven Universe. I haven't read the comics. I assume it's more of that. Uh, Spider-Man. Ooh. 10, which Spider-Man 2099 was a big enough deal that it's got an ongoing. Yeah, every yeah. every oh. month I see this and I'm like, I can't believe there's a 2099 book. But the, the thing. But I remember when I was a kid, I was watching the Spider-Man show and I was like, this is so cool. And then they canceled it yeah. after like one season. So I'm excited that they're bringing yeah, that are. back. And they're actually, I don't know where it is in this pile, but there's also Batman. There was also, yeah, Batman Beyond Yeah, we got back. the Batman Beyond. Um, it's in there. I saw it. Yeah, right. and it feels, this it's Batman good. Beyond feels like that TV show. Oh, it yeah. feels like it's the TV show in comic book, which is amazing. It's a good, it's a good comic. We'll get there. Let's go yeah. back up. Yeah, yeah. We're, we got a lot, we're skipping uh, a lot. We got 29. Then we got Gwenpool. Uh, uh, looks no, like issue zero. Oh, a zero issue of which Gwenpool. Which is zero. Featuring Howard the Duck, it looks like. I Can you explain to me what Gwenpool is? Um... Apparently, this book can. This book is going to do that. Who is Gwenpool? Where did she come from? Ever since she made a splash in her first cover appearance, there have been questions on everyone's lips as they lounge about, sipping from a tropical beverages. Now, get all three of the original Gwen, Gwenpool backup stories from Howard the Duck. Mm. Um, so it's just like a... So these were backup issues. Um, for those of you that don't know the jargon, mm. uh, a lot of comics will have like a story and then like maybe a five or six page story at the end. Uh. That's called a backup issue. Oh. Uh. Uh, so, so that means in Howard the Duck 1 and 3, you would read Howard the Duck, and then you would turn the page, and there'd be a little Gwenpool story. This is a collection of those three stories. So if you like Gwenpool, you should check yes. it out. Or if you were interested in Gwenpool, but you didn't want to pull Howard the Duck, now you can now just you read have Gwenpool. That. It's a fan service of cosplayers. Probably. The, Probably. The, the Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, uh, Shazam series uh, was told just in the backups of Justice League. and then collected Oh, really? Tree. Like, that's... How these things happen sometimes. I just wondered if it was like Gwen from like not Gwen Stefani, um, Gwen from Spider Man Gwen. Oh yeah, it's it's Gwen Stacy. Oh, it is. Um, okay, yeah, it's, it's Spider Gwen, Gwen Stacy, because Spider Gwen is so popular that Spider Gwen is so popular right now, and Deadpool is so popular right now that let's they just smashed them together. them together and were like, let's make lots of money. Let's make lots of. Green Lantern money. 52. I should have read this, and I didn't. What? You um, didn't do your homework. I didn't expect. Okay, I read. I, I I read like the books that are most important to me first. I get all oh, the books, and I'm like, sense. all right, I gotta read Klaus first because Klaus is the best. Oh, book. dude, we're so excited um, to talk about. We're Klaus. gonna talk about Klaus. Klaus I'm sad I didn't, wasn't able to read Klaus. Um, but so then I'm like, okay, so Green Lantern's doing okay right now. I don't need to read that. I'll read this instead. And then it's like, okay, Green Lantern is apparently at the top DC book. <sighs> so I never. I don't know. I don't know what these people in Crossroads are reading. I should pay more attention to it though. We should, yeah, we um, should have looked. At but now, now that I now I'm going to remember sublist.altruistcollectibles.com. I'm not going to forget that. No, this we're going to we're going to. I'm going to check it next Wednesday morning and read them in the right order. So Green Lantern has been uh, is being pursued by the Gray Agents um, because villains always have to have some shade of black. If you're a Green Lantern, apparently. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Um, he was on Earth for a while, hanging out with his brother while his buddies in the space got kidnapped, and so now he's gonna have to go kick their ass. Apparently. Okay, that's what this Not his buddies, about. the kidnappers. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Why would you? Why, you kidnapped my friends. Rah. Okay, then there's Flash 51. Yeah. So the Flash, the Flash was arrested oh. in Flash 50 last month. Um, the cult, the the rogues were worth it, working with the cops because he was like framed, and apparently the Riddler is behind it. So now we've got the Flash versus the Riddler. Flash's mm. world is in utter chaos. He's wanted by the police, headed by he headed by his adopted father. His enemies, the rogues, have been deputized to, to take him in. Oh, by the way, in Captain Singh sort of helped raise Barry a little bit um, in the comics these days, just like Joe West did in the TV show. Okay. Um, okay. There's no Joe West in the comics, but he was still like, there's still the father in prison and the father that raised me. That's why I became a cop. The rogues have been deputized to take him in, and it couldn't be a worse time for the Riddler to stake his claim as the most dangerous man in Central City. I don't... Why is the Riddler in Central City? I don't know, because Batman's too hard. Batman I, is too hard. ridiculous, because the Flash is the most powerful hero in the DC Universe. Um, yeah, but he's also the moral fiber. Like, he's also the one who, like... Yeah, but that's like all of them. So is Superman. No, no, no. So is Wonder Woman. No, if... if like, isn't that the start of one alternate reality where Flash is gone, and because Flash dies, the super, the Justice League goes rough? That is like that is that is, that is one, one of, of the them. Arcs. Yes, yeah. but in the continuity that like most of the books take place in, Superman's Superman. Uh. Like Superman is still Superman. There's a lot of alternate realities in which, and 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 the key word there is alternate. 
to me, they, they the purposefully Flash, alter the themes. Yeah. To me, the Flash is very much like. Oh yeah, he's one of them. He's also the he's the lighthearted. Like yeah. Superman's the moral center, but but the Flash is the guy that uh, reminds them uh, that they're people still. Yeah, he's the normal guy. He's the normal guy. As um, he, he and Green Lantern both, but Green Lantern does it in a more douchey way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Giant J is fourteen. I read this. I did. Oh, uh, it's one of the books in your stack. Yeah, I did thy homework. Tell um, us about Giant Days. So it looked like it was, uh, it was like college. They were like college agey, and they tried to find a house. So I think it was. It feels a lot like the Archie, where they're just like hijinks of real life. I wanted to enjoy it more than I did. I think for me, which is sad. It just like to sad. me, I was like these jokes have been made before. Mm. The same like, oh, college is silly. Like what? But, uh, so it was yeah. that. I mean. I remember reading, watching the All Grown Up special on Regrets yeah, when uh, I was a kid. Yeah. And like so, that, that was what I learned to every college joke there is to be told. Yeah, like it was a, it's, it's a, I mean, I, I honestly, I find the characters really enjoyable. Individually, they're enjoyable and their hijinks are adorable. But like, I could live without this comic book in my life. It's really cute though. Like. Look at this art. Like, this art is art that I'd want to do. That is cute. Like, it's super, like, it is super cute. There's a goth girl. I ship all the characters together. Um, I just, I need more sustenance. I need more action. Because literally, it took them this long to find a house in college. So it's an antics book. It's an antics book. So I, I want, see, this is also one that I would get an entire book on because then I could see the characters grow and I could absorb the really cute art style, but I could survive without it. Yes. I'm super mean when it comes to comic books. Like, I'm not mean about anything except for, like, my number one is, like, I can live without this. <laughs> All right, what's next? Oh, but screw this comic. Next but we got it. Captain America Samuels. I got another, another Oh, another oh you, you did it. You, you, can, uh, you can click the middle button. It'll open links in, the in another tab. Yeah. Oh, that's convenient. That's convenient. Um, the epilogue of Standoff, which oh. um, basically it seems that the, the the function of that event was to make old Sam, old Captain America young. So with Steve, this is Captain America Stan Wilson. With Steve Rogers back as Cap, Sam struggles to find his place. Can the country handle two Captain Americas? Ooh, the world can't. And this is going to answer for Civil War, right? No, I don't. Th it might. I don't know how much this is going to be part of Civil War. Um, but they made him young again. Yeah, the old old Steve. They made Steve Trevor old, and they made him young again. Um, so we have a young Steve Trevor again. Cool. Uh, which I, I think it's kind of a shame. I thought they were sort of going into this like that. We've got an old Wolverine and an old Captain America, and a young Wolverine and a young Captain America. And by making the old Captain America young, you change the young Captain America to Sam Wilson again. Like, uh, just like 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 I picked up. I see what you're saying. Like like even though we're just calling Miles Morales Spider Man now. In day-to-day -day conversation, he's young Spider-Man. There's, well, there's, there's, there's Miles Morales Spider-Man, and when if when you just say Spider-Man, people think, um, oh my God, I just said Steve Trevor a bunch of times, didn't I? He's he's Steve Rogers. Thank you, Armut, for calling me out on that. I'd make that wow. mistake I, way I too like often. Armut. I like um, Armut. I think Armut should be too. here all the time. No, all the. I comments. mean, you guys are all great, but like he's he's got us out. I like it. He joins um, the crew. So yeah, I feel like like by making by by making Steve Rogers Captain America again, you make. Sam Wilson, the other Captain America. Uh -huh. You know, by making Peter Parker Spider-Man again, you make Miles Morales the other yeah. Spider-Man. They have to be those characters for so long before they're not the other one. Yeah. You know? And by changing that, yeah. So we'll see how it happens. It like, I like that there's there's Old Man Logan, and, there, and X-23 is the only Wolverine around. So yeah. she's Wolverine. When you say Wolverine, you can only be talking about X-23 right now. That's cool to me. Yeah. I, I would have enjoyed that there's less backspaces in comics, but that's really hard. Mm -hmm. That's really hard. Yeah, that's true. All right. Which is why you got to commit to them. I know, and that's so hard for comic books to do they because don't, they really don't like. They don't like doing that. Okay, Punisher. The Punisher, Punisher number one. Um, Ooh. I through this comic. Okay, tell um, us what you think about it. I'm like, doing oh, the oh, clicky oh, thing. I had it like right at the top. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, it's a great cover. It's, yeah, and it's being written by Becky Cloonan, who is uh, cool. Yeah. Um, and being drawn by Steve Dillon, who I'm usually not a big fan of, which is why really? I decided not to pick it up. Really. Um, and a lot of people really like Steve Dillon, and I understand that. I'm not huge. 
Uh, punisher number one, Frank Castle loses control. A by-the-numbers drug bust is about to take Frank Castle by surprise, and he hates surprises. The horrible fallout threatens to send the Punisher into the heart of darkness, but Castle won't make that journey alone. A DEA agent is on his trail and attempting to get into his head. But what horrors will she find there, and will she survive the experience? First-time Punisher writer Becky Cloonan and quintessential Punisher artist Steve Dillon are forcing Frank Castle out of his comfort zone and taking him to the edge of the world he thought he knew. This is a non-Max book with a parental advisory on it, which is usually uh, not the case. Dyrus Nye, Miles, when he first got his Spider-Man suit, people were mad at him in the comics because Peter Parker had just died. So he started out as the other in the Ultimate Universe 2. Ultimate Comics started out with Peter Parker as Spider-Man as well. Um... So yeah, like he was the new Spider-Man, but he's also kind of the other Spider-Man. When Bruce died and Dick was Batman, we still had to call it Dick Bats. We can't like, we still know Bruce Wayne is Batman. I'm not saying he can't be, but I'm saying it takes a really long time. Wally West, it took him like 20 years for us to call him just the Flash. That's fair. You know, Barry was the Flash um, for so long. So, Punisher, I'm looking through, uh, I remember we were talking about this before. A lot of comic art, and you said that it's like just yeah. feels... All, I feel like a lot of the Marvel art right now is the same. Like, because I'm looking through this and I'm not seeing anything spectacular. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing great There's visuals. like a house style, which is like, DC did this about five years ago uh -huh. when, they, when they did New 52, where basically everybody was drawing like Jim Lee. Yeah. Um, and it just like, it's cool because the, the art's not bad no. by any means. No, no. It's, but it's... there's a point at which I'm like, okay, I kind of like different styles I... in different books as I go, as I go here and there. And just getting, like, all this really thick ink, like, everybody's going to look kind of like it could be on television thing going on. Like, I just can't get into it. Okay. Right and all the comics I read. Yeah, they're, like, the exceptions are, like. all like, the ones that look yeah, different. Like, like, Moon Knight. Moon Knight is not doing that. Moon oh, Knight is doing great. its own thing. It's, it's, I want to talk about this so bad, but we're not there yet. Giant Days, I give them props for doing something different. I loved the art style. Like, if I had to pick my favorite art style, it would probably be this one. Um, and then there's, like, we're not here yet, but, like, look at this cover. Like, I want to read this. I don't know if you can see this chat. This art is gorgeous. Like, it's got, like, the sketchiness, and I love what Image does. Like, whatever Image does, I can just... Like, and so all the cooks I read had very interesting art. Mm -hmm. And, and that's there's stuff like, in. like, there's this DC book, Midnighter, which, like, has these really neat uh, panels with, uh, I'm going to find one with a bunch yeah. of, like, these yeah. cool spirals going on around them. Oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Um... Where's your thing? Oh, yeah. oh. Like, that's, this is not like your conventional fight scene. And you gotta be you gotta be hiring guys like Aiko. He's awesome. Yeah. We, it just, I think at this point. Don't get, get me wrong. There's, DC does it too. And there's a lot of Marvel books that do have a lot of yeah. creativity, like what we mentioned. Uh, uh, the ones I like was talking about. Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just like, it feels like th there's a comic, and it, it, the same would be said for manga, where there's a very specific, like, this is how you draw this. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's. Like, I like those who are pushing the boundaries and are doing something like that. And all, you know, all the best artists are people that are recognizable. You know, you're like, oh, I, I want to yeah. get the Sean Murphy comic because it doesn't look like anybody could draw right. this. Only Sean Murphy can do that. Or um, who's the art, who's the, the colorist who does Saga? Like, she's yeah, amazing. Uh, yeah, Fiona Staples, yeah. who is arguably the best artist working in the industry right now. Yeah. She does not look like a lot of other people. Yeah. Okay, so, um, De Daredevil Punisher 1. Man, they, Mar Disney is a really big fan of Synergy. Um, like Can Disney specifically, synergy being like we want all our things to advertise each other. That's oh, why yeah. they're. That's why the Disney TV shows really reflect the Avengers lineup. Yeah, you know that's like right after Captain America two, there was a there was a TV show where Falcon joined the Avengers. Okay, that's not an accident. We got Daredevil Punisher now. Guess why? Because um, that wasn't that a Netflix show. Yeah. Have you not seen Daredevil season no, two? No, I, I haven't seen any of Daredevil. Oh, dude! I, I watched almost all of Jessica Jones. Oh man, I'm I am excited uh, for chat to freak the fuck out no, it's right okay. now because you like, haven't seen Daredevil. It's dude. just because I watch so guys, I'm here all the time. But it's like, so I'm episode eleven out of twelve of Jessica Jones. I have this problem where I don't finish things. Like I, it's when I order things to eat, I eat almost everything, but I leave like two bites left because if I read okay, all well, of then it, you don't have to watch all the credits. Okay. After the oh, last okay. episode, okay, and that can be that can be the leftovers you lead. I lead. actually are my. I wanted to read the Archie when the Fa Fiona Staple was doing it. I didn't pick it up. I didn't. I missed it. I read that first issue. It was really pretty. I, I actually do love Archie, and I lo Giant Days is great. It just could be more. 
Well, okay. Yeah, go, I'm, so I'm, you walk out and go watch Daredevil. That's not bad advice. So anyway, Daredevil Punisher number one. Maybe I'll put it on when I'm cosplaying. A simple change of venues for one of Matt Murdock's cases becomes more complicated when the Punisher attempts to send the defendant away permanently. If Daredevil and Blindspot want to get this mobster his day in court, it will take every once a, 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 every ounce of wit and while they have. All Frank needs to get what he wants is a bullet. The race is on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. This is just this because this, this is not something to laugh at. I don't know who Blindspot is. Is that like his sidekick? Yeah. Okay, good. Is yeah. he also de blind? He, oh my god, I think that like he is blind or it's something else. I I don't fully know, and of course. I'm sure. I'm sure Zach is sitting there. He's like, I'm too busy to tell these guys why they're wrong, them. but they're I really am. fucking wrong. Or uh, he's still crying about his comments. Tell us who Blindspot is. I'm sure somebody out there uh, is reading. So I saw a lot of people mention this shame corner. Here's what I would like. I would like to have a shame cone. <laughs> then I could still be <laughs> doing wanna, my show. You want a cone of shame? Yeah, I think we need a cone of shame. And now I'm thinking because before it was like a cone. Actually, getting like one of those dog. Cones yeah, an actual of shame. cone of shame. Yeah, we should get a. We cone get a of shame matching in. cone of shame and a dunce hat. Yeah, and then, then that's what Make you wear set. until somebody else shames. Yeah. Okay, so we're running out of time. So we're gonna do breeze through, and, uh, and we're gonna be like, yay, nay, yes. and then move on. Okay. So Superman, the coming number four. Coming Superman. Uh, it's Neil Adams doing his own crazy thing. You love it? I don't okay. know. It's X Men two and three. This cover looks amazing. X Men ninety two number three. This is oh, uh, this is the I continuing the cartoon. Oh, uh, like so the the nineties cartoon. The nineties cartoon. Okay. Um, and it's gonna be versus Dracula. So oh, that. sweet. Cool. I'd pick that up. I would pick it up. Um, okay. Uh, Rocket Raccoon and, and Groot number five. Groot's number five. That's gonna looks be adorable. adorable. Looks funny. Is it supposed to be a comedy or is it supposed I to be an action? I don't okay. know. Okay. Uh, we got Batman Beyond. Love this it. is the twelfth issue. Uh. Tim Drake is bat is the Batman Beyond right now. He was the third Robin because uh -huh. there was this event called Future's End where Batman Beyond went like into the past, but that was also kind of our future, and then died. And Tim Drake went into the other future, and now he's Batman Beyond. Yeah. So that's kind of weird, but this is still great. Yeah. Starting next month, they're gonna go back to it being Terry McGinnis. Oh being yeah. Batman Beyond. I love so, Terry. So yeah, if you like this and you want more your cartoon version of Batman Beyond, mm -hmm. it's coming real soon. Yeah. Uh, Nova number seven. Looks like he's gonna fly through space. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like Nova. Nova's an interesting character. Uh, Wolf number seven. I don't know. I can't. I want to look the picture up close. Um, story. Ailes, Colt, Art, Ricardo Lopez, Ortiz, and... Wow, this is this is just yelling. Oh, story, names. Alice Coe. Art, yeah. Ricardo Lopez. Um, I want to see this picture up close. Alice Coe's good. He wrote two issues of Suicide Like, this Squad. looks gorgeous. This looks good. Why did we not have this in the pile? Number Why seven. Why was this not in the pile? It looks like it's uh, a few there's, there's lots. Of, there's I love just, monsters. There's so many comics. There's so many comics, and I've read a lot of them, and they're not even on this list. Let's okay. Let's just um, look through them. Howard the Duck. It's um, Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons number one. New Dungeons and Dragons Ooh. comic. Ooh. Doing this. Ooh. My gym's up. Uh, Minsk and Boo are oh, those are are back, and things have never looked more dire. And the mysterious forces draw the legendary ranger and his crew for the adventures of Ravenloft, the realm of terror, where they find themselves face to face with horrors and land owed eternal night. I would want to get this. I love these two people, Minsk and Boo. Blind spot is Cyclops without his powers. <laughs> I like that. I don't even know if any of these are right, but we got Blind Spot starring Ashley Johnson. Blind Spot is Jamie Alexander. It looks good. I mean, it looks good. Dungeon Dragons, not in our pile. Batman uh, Superman. This is number five of Pete Tomasi's uh, Super League story, which is the final days of Superman, uh -huh. uh, which has been great. This is the one where they go to China. They fight the Great Ten, yeah, who you are the excited. who are the superhero who are the Chinese superheroes who are awesome, yeah. and uh, and they find out about Chinese Superman. It's kind of a prelude to the Chinese Superman, but it's also continuing the whole Bruce Wayne or uh, Clark Kent is dying thing. Uh, Army of Darkness. I like the idea of Army of Darkness. I did not know they made a comic book. And they're facing Dracula. No, sorry. The angry confrontation between Eva, the daughter of Dracula. Oh, daughter of Dracula. Wow, that there sounds great. I love Boomstick. I love it. I love it. Now I need to watch that movie again. Okay. Um, Nailbiter looks really interesting. Was not in our stack. So let's look at it. Um, it looks like a horror. I, I love it. New story arc, Bound by Blood. Part one, Alice now knows that the nail biter is her father. Does that Spoilers. mean she will grow up to be a serial killer? I feel like if I want to read this story now, like, I feel, now like, you that, have I feel like that ruined. was the big reveal after 20 months of following it. Like, no. I have no idea. It might, it, it might have been just like a three issue story arc from like 18 to 20, but it could be the big one. No, I like, I like, I love image. I'm excited about it. I like oh. that image is doing different things. I wish I could have seen it. Is Armut just like me in like another timeline? Because he's talking about all the books I love. Oh, um, you and Armut can like. Oh man, Armut's, Armut's my new buddy. Yeah, you can follow each other. Okay, uh, this was I was yeah, excited about because Gra Grayson is awesome. Yeah, so click this. Grant Morrison's 18 Days has been going on for a couple months now. 
Um, it's technically not all written by Grant Morrison. He sort of helps plot it. He basically is retelling a story from the Mahabharata, which I might be saying wrong, which is uh, the Hindu holy text. Okay. So it's from Indian religious mythology. He's telling the story of this battle that was fought over 18 days. Um, that's really important. And uh, I am really unfamiliar with this mythology um, or this belief system. So, And Grant Morrison is my favorite writer. I pull anything he's doing. Um, it's it's really cool. This this publisher, Graphic India, is publishing comics with these big names that I think are trying to help it out because it's this Indian company. Stan Lee is is writing a comic for them called Stan Lee's Chakra the Invincible. <laughs> um, Chuck Dixon, who did lots and lots of uh, Batman in the 90s before he got fired for being homophobic, uh -huh. um, is doing stuff. So you can buy that if you want to. I, I have an ongoing ambivalence about Chuck Dixon because of that. Um, Names, names. But anyway, this... Uh, gorgeous, so yeah, names. So this is gorgeous. It's really cool because it's not... I think that it's it's being written in a sense... I don't want to say it's like dumbed down or written... It's written as adult as anything else, but like the panels are really big and the speech is kind of big in that I think it's kind of written for uh, people who don't necessarily speak English as a first language. Oh. So they can get... Or, or to just to be able to translate... Um, well into other languages uh, so that it can sell in both America and India. That's cool. Uh, but I'm it's it's for this, like, mythology is cool, and there's so many different belief systems mm -hmm. that, like, you can't follow them all, and I want all my stories to be told in comic book form, so this is that for me, which great. is great. I love it. Okay. I, I want to pick this one up. Bob's Burgers, uh, ongoing. It's I've read a couple of them. Uh, the first issue of the Bob's Burgers, that was fun. Uh, all new Inhumans number seven. God, there's so I can't get to all this. Nah, okay, yeah, there's, there's just too okay. many comics to um, get to. All new Inhuman, Inhumans number seven. I did read that one. I don't have it with where me. Where is it? Oh, um, this one. It's right in the middle, um, where the, there's a one of the new humans, Flint, who has the ability to control oh. rocks and stuff. Uh, we find out where he came from, and we cool. go to his home, and it turns out there's another secret society of Inhumans on Earth. So there used to be just Adelan, and now there was Adelan and Oralan, and now Udolan, as well as a bunch of ones in space. Then humans are getting a little out of hand, but that happens. You like it. Okay, so, so before let's, we continue. Let's talk about the books that like we, we really want to okay. get, get deal um, with before we get so out of here. So here, I read a couple number ones because I was like, I really want to. And so he's just my book. The Lady Machina is steampunk. It does steampunk really prettily. Um, but I was talking with Anna about it, and it feels like uh, it's written like fan fiction. Where it's gorgeous, but there's no, it's not deep. It's gorgeous. I want to cosplay her so bad. It's it, everything about the world and the drawing is great, but the writing is not there yet. Um, I always pick the one with girls on top. A force. Uh, it's fun. It's fun and silly, and it's got Hulk. It's got Nico from Runaways. It's got Medusa, which I've always loved, and it's got Captain Marvel and Dazzle. So I love it. I want. I actually want to get this now. I want to start. That's cool. It. There's. This is actually the second A Force ongoing that has existed. Not yeah. ongoing. Um. So like that number five isn't necessarily an actual five. There's other. Yeah. Um, but I'm ones. digging it. I'm super. And they, they, they. Both series are great. The first one by Marguerite Bennett uh -huh. is, I think, better than the new writers, That's which are probably. Willow Wilson and and Kelly Thompson. But, um, but they're both awesome. I love She-Hulk. I think she's great. She's very much who I want to be when I grow up. Um. And then I picked up, uh, Renato Jones, this. the one. And the concept is, I'm not going to be spoiling a lot. You can guess what's going to happen. Um, the 1% own more than half the world's wealth. They've crashed economies, bought governments, and have amassed more power than any other group in history. And they still don't have enough. With this kind of power, how can anyone make them pay? Who will make them pay? Enter Renato Jones, a mysterious vigilante, out to even the score. And when he enters the fray, the super rich air, super fucked... What? Yeah. So uh, when he enters the fray, the super rich are super fucked. From acclaimed creator, Car Kyle Anders. Iron, Iron Fist, Fist, The Living Whipping, Spider-Man Oh, Rain. he did Spider-Man Rain. Yeah. How about that? So I'm really enjoying the style of it. It feels a lot different than some of the things I've read. Um, I like when the writers, I like when the writer and the artist is the same person. Yeah. I like when it's just kind of um, one person's vision. It's, I'm going to be honest. It's like, oh, rich people are bad. Is it, is mm. it a little bit like... But, oh, oh. but the, okay, so the first... <laughs> this is yeah. what I opened the, the book to. The first three pages are amazing. And I what I really want from this is uh, like growth of Renato Jones. Cause they introduce his backstory and it's really interesting and I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Um, he's a character I wanna learn more about. I'm digging it. I'm really digging. And what I enjoy is that there's advertisements in it. 
that are about that are fake advertisements. Oh, this isn't a real ad. No, it's like a it fake says, one. Comic books for the super rich, Renato Jones. So it's just like that's hilarious to me. They did a good job. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it is pushing an agenda a yeah. hundred. Although the kit like. Like, there's a book called Bitch Planet. I don't oh, know if yeah. you've checked it out yeah, by yeah, Kelsey yeah. DeConnick. People love that it. book is pushing an agenda super hard. Yeah. That book is really pissed off and not ashamed to tell no. you. And it's awesome. I love that book. Yeah. So, like, there's something said about you can be really upfront, like, I have this opinion, and it doesn't it doesn't ruin your yeah. story. It just has to be, like, um, Kelsey DeConnick is a good enough writer to pull it off. And then my last one, because I want you to have your time. This one is right. great art. It's really sketchy art, which I know a couple of weeks ago we talked about that it was charcoaly and bad. This is charcoaly and gold. Good. It does a really, I, and this cover is not representation of what the art is inside, but it feels good. It, you said Moon Knight is crazy Batman. Yeah, he's he's Marvel's crazy Batman. Um, now, what are your favorites on this one? Um, so, well, the big one that we, we should both talk about. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I wanted to I mentioned my so favorite bad. writer, Grant Morrison. He is working on this book called Klaus. I wanted it so bad. I wanted to read um, it. Um being published by Boom Studios, who are kicking ass these days. Uh, it is telling the origin story of Santa Claus. But badass. Santa but Claus. he's like sexy Santa Claus. I, I refer to this book as sexy Santa Claus. Like this morning on the way to the comic book store, I, I turned to my girlfriend and I was like, oh dude, sexy Santa Claus number five comes out. I'm so excited. That's how I refer to this book. Uh yeah, this right now we've been he's he's been making toys that oh, sort of come that. to life. Show that, man. And he uh, he's, he like sneaks into the city and beats the shit out of some guards. Uh, in this book we finally find out sort of what the bad guy's motivation is. Um, it just looks really pretty. Which is cool because like the, the villain was it was so like cut and dry, like there's this guy who sort of hates fun and is making everybody work too much. And then there's this guy who hates that and can make toys. And so it seemed really straightforward, and of course it's Grant Morrison, so now it's much more of a sort of interweaving storyline. Uh, it's really good. This is going to be, in two months it'll be over, this will be a good one to get the trade uh, of. See, I, I was actually with... going to go see if they had all one through five and just buy that That's now. also worth doing. That's better. <laughs> if there's any series you like, look at they have all the back issues, buy all of them, and then subscribe. Yeah. But it, if you can't do that, this one's going to be a great trade. It's going to it's gonna be a great Christmas trade. Oh, yeah. I'm going to buy this for, like, everybody this year for Christmas. It is Santa Claus year one. Yeah. Um, it is very much based on Nordic legend like and I, sort of the actual Santa myth and not on the Christmas part. There's a holiday day called Yule time in the village. There's no Christian mythology in there. It's just the Nordic mythology. It's, it looks really Not really cool. mythology. I mean, this is... The cro what is the monster that takes bad kids? The cru the cr Krampus. The Krampus. I, that looks like a Krampus. That me. does look like a Krampus. This this uh t this week on covers that mean nothing. This monster is not in this book. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's lots. <laughs> That's definitely a thing, by the way. When you read a book, you'd be yeah. like, oh, look at those people on the cover. Okay, there's not. And um, then this one is sex aliens. Sex aliens. Sex aliens. Cool. Uh, it's if you like it, it's great. I can't wait to see where it builds. But this is sex aliens. We got uh Midnighter. Which is, um, which this was from one. Wildstorm. Mm -hmm. They're really letting us know that it's yeah, yeah. not a uh, Midnighter was from Wildstorm. He was their Batman analog. There's been a 12 issue series that's been amazing, and it finally wrapped up. This oh, is this is ended. the saddest series I'm gonna see go this month. Uh, Midnighter is really great. That is so all the time we have. Okay, so uh, love comic books. Comics Read what you support, what you like. Don't steal it. Um, comic book day is free on Saturday. Corporate sins is today. Uh, Claudia's got to go see if there's a comic book store in you, uh, the area she lives so I can buy comic books. Buy all the Klaus. And uh, yes, yeah, stick around for watching Paint Dry next with Viking Lass. Yeah, she's almost as crazy as me. And remember, almost. if you can't stick around for watching Paint Dry, come back tomorrow, 9 a.m. We begin the R Loop stream. Stick around all day. There's going to be amazing stuff. It's going to be an awesome day. And remember, awesome. $15,000 and there's going to be a shark on national television with our fucking name. On it. Tweet it out. So, Bye. tweet it out. Goodbye, guys. Shut it down. Comic book uh. day. Comic book day. We're going to open some books on comic book day. Zach's on my left. You're on my right. Comic book day. Oh, I know your name. Right, let's clean all this shit up. <laughs>